Dr. David and Stephanie Hazard are the founders of David Hazard Ministries. Their passion is to live in the presence and glory of God through intimacy with God in the Holy Spirit to equip believers to do the greater works and to bring the gospel to as many souls as possible in every nation of the world. Dr. David and Stephanie have been in full-time ministry for over 25 years since 1991 and have lived in the U.S. as well as in France with their family as missionaries. They have ministered in over 50 nations and held both large evangelistic campaigns. They are also the blessed parents of three beautiful daughters. For several years, they hosted a TV show called The Glory Zone and have appeared on numerous television interviews, both Christians and secular. David is the author of eight books, including Glory Invasion, and Stephanie is the author of God is Your Matchmaker. And they are the founders of DHM. Spreading the greater glory is how they live their life through ministering in stadiums, conferences, revivals, and outreach all over the world in every continent. Ladies and gentlemen, with Jesus' joy, let us welcome to the stage Dr. David Hezog. Wow, I, I want to meet that person. <laughs> that's, that's, they may me sound a lot better than I am. That's awesome. When an, when an African does your, your uh, intro, it's way better. <laughs> this man has done the most. He has won the most souls, more than Reinhard Bonnke and Billy Graham put together. <laughs> this man has seen tumors disappear the size of a watermelon off a man's pinky. What? <laughs> you know, like Benny Hinn, I said, you're the Crusades. What, what happened, Benny? This man did not exist before the meeting, <laughs> and now he exists. <laughs> Benny, it's a mirror. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> but they have, I love the faith of the African brothers. Amen? How many love them? Woo! And we love Pastor Miles and his wife. And I knew him way back. He came to Sedona and when, he was, when he wrote the Order of Melchizedek. What was it, 2010 or 9 or 8? Or I don't remember what it was, 12, 14 years ago. And we met him and we invited him over. And he, did our, what a, he was on our TV show, The Glory Zone, that he just promoted. He was on that show. And we, we go back a long way. 2009, oh my gosh. So that's when we connected, 2009. And then I preach at your church either before or after that in Dallas. And it's amazing. Before that, wow, okay. So we go back a long way, amen? And I'm actually a black man trapped in a white man's body. When I go to black churches, I, I share that a lot. And, I go, and, I can't, and I've been rejected from both sides because none of them believe it. You know? so, so you can, you can sit down if you want. Well, it's great to be here. We have, a, we have a good time in the glory. Maybe the keyboard player can get ready to come back up in a second. When he was young, he said, Lord, please use me. Now he's like, man, I'm feeling used. This is, but, yeah, so I'm going to get the keyboard. Yeah, just have to be ready. Yeah, you said, you said, Lord, use me. So, you know, don't, don't complain if you feel used, you know. We, we've all been there. But it's an honor to be here. Honor to be with, of course, my, my, my favorite person in this room is, of course, Stephanie Herzog. Why don't you stand up, Stephanie? Woo! Awesome woman of God. She's traveled the world with me. She moves in the glory, a seer, prophetic seer, miracle signs, wonders, healed leukemia when she was little. And she's got an incredible book. I don't know if it's back there. Should be. If it's not, it's online. God is your matchmaker. So some of you are, some of you are single. Some of you are you're singing the Willie Nelson, you know, looking for love in all the wrong churches, looking for love in too many seminars, searching their eyes. And you know what? Hallelujah. 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 So you need to get some revelation and deliverance, probably some of you. <laughs> and the, the only scripture for that is he who finds a wife finds a good thing. Problem is she wasn't looking for you, so there's a problem there. So, so get the book. It's going to help you figure that out. How many want to figure out how do I do it? Like do I just go to different churches till I find the one? Do I go to ChristianMingle.com? No. Okay. How many know God's got to, anyway, so that's my beautiful, awesome wife, and we're, she, we have three beautiful children together, and she's so faithful. Every birth of every baby, she was right by my side at the, at the <laughs> hospital. I mean, she, she didn't leave my side. I, I, I honor, honestly could not, no, honestly, I don't think I could have had those babies if she wasn't there. <laughs> really, it takes two. You know, it was, so I'm honored, I'm so honored, but I love her so much. 
No, she could. I, I, she helped me through it. I mean, she was, you know, breathe, breathe, breathe. Whoo, the blood. I mean, she, she's, she's good. awesome. <laughs> There's no way. <laughs> you know, laughter is like medicine. Some of you don't like laughing. It's okay. It's just, it's not you. It's just the religious demon in you. You're fine. <laughs> you're, you're fine. No, you're fine. I would never say that about you. I would never insult you. God has made you beautiful and wonderful, and, and you're creating his image. I'm not, don't get offended. I'm not talking about you, the demon in you. You're fine. You don't need to, you don't need to leave. No, just the demon. Go, you're good. You stay. Okay. <laughs> it's getting quiet in here. Yeah. Th- so that's just, that's called the religious spirit. If you don't like laughter, don't go to heaven. You'll hate it. I mean, it is, the, it is not like silence in the church. It's not like that. It was like that one time for 30 minutes in heaven. That's it. It's a lot of noise and singing and miracles and shaking and uh, the throne is moving and it's like, wow, it's, it's intense, man. I want heaven, but I'm honored. So happy she's with me today. And we have another good friend, Warren and Kayla. Is it Kayla? Today's, no, was it Carla? I forget. Kayla, Warren and Kayla Hunter. Why don't you guys stand up too? And these guys are, these guys are African also. These are white Africans. They're black, but they were born albino. So, so some happened in childhood. No, well, he, he's African. She's from West Virginia. Mountain mama, take me home. And married a... So I'm not going to do the whole story about how the white people end up in South Africa, but bottom line is, so he, he goes Africa, does crusades in Nigeria, and he's been all around the world. And he's in Branson, Missouri, which will be at your place next month. So he, he want, he's so hungry, he want to come here just to be part. And he, and he texted me that he knows Miles from years back, I guess. So a long story. It's awesome. And how many loved Katie Souza last night? Wasn't that awesome? We love her. She's a good friend of ours. She lives in Arizona, probably, she's probably like an hour or half an hour from our building. She comes, she's come to our conference for you. Suzanne came last year. We just spent like two days with her. It was fun. She just came to hang out, you know. So it's like a family, it feels like family here. And the rest of you, I don't know who the heck you are, really. I don't know. (laughs) <laughs> but I'm happy to be here. I feel comfortable here. Sometimes I feel more comfortable than the people from the town I'm preaching to because when the glory comes, it's, it's your realm. And I almost have to tell the people, hey, relax. Welcome to Franklin, Tennessee. We were in Dubai one time, and the glory came. It was a 1,000 people in Dubai, and the pastors were warning me, don't say this, don't say that. There's Muslims, and there could be the police, or there could be hidden imams or whatever. And people from Saudi Arabia were flying in. So I got so wasted in the glory of God in the worship. I was on the floor just like, whoa, and I forgot everything. And then I heard my name, David Herzog. Please. I didn't know when I was on the floor. They already were thinking, did he have a seizure? Did we call the ambulance? I was just soaking. I didn't know what, you know. And I got up, and I was like, hey. And, and the first thing I said was, please leave all explosive backpacks at the front door. <laughs> and, er- and everyone's like, and the pastors are like, what? No, what are you doing? Stop. Stop. And any remote control devices. And it, it was like the worst thing you should say, right? But what happened was the Lord took care of the elephant in the room. And then after the awkward silence, everyone started laughing their head off. <laughs> and then the glory manifested a miracle, signs and wonders. So what I noticed is you can't take off Saul's, Saul's armor. You've got to put on the armor that's, that's made for you. Does that make sense? Man, I feel the presence here already. T- turn to someone next to you. Just tell them this. Don't worry. You're going to look a lot better in heaven. And you might have to pray inner healing right after. Okay. Now, don't tell it to your wife. No, no. Francis told his wife. No, don't tell your wife. Don't tell it to your husband. Don't tell it to people that have maybe need healing in that area. But, man, it's so quiet in here. How many are happy that in heaven we're going to have good bo- renewed bodies, resurrected bodies? But we, we can get some of that now. Amen? Like if you're really fat, you're not fat. You're fat as fat. You're a spirit being from heaven. That's not how you're going to look forever. That's temporary, but it could be, you could take care of that too. Amen? How many are happy you're not fat? You're fat as fat. Isn't that awesome? It's like Tony Robbins is going to start using that. I am not fat. My fat is fat. I am not fat. man. <laughs> I am not fat at all. My fat is fat. I am a spirit in a body. My body's just coming along for the ride. This body is only temporary for the time I'm on the earth. If I look hideous, it's just to scare the devil while I'm on the earth. This is not me. This is a shell, you know. <laughs> but, 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 you know, can also have, Lord, let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven, or you start looking like heaven. How many want that too? And, and she talked about last night about resurrected bodies. But how many know, how many know not just beating death, but even looking better while you're waiting for that? Yeah. Like God starts age reversal. He renews your youth. 
like the, not the bald eagles, but eagles. Make sure you claim the right eagle. <laughs> we've seen bald people grow hair in meetings at times. We have, we've had it on film. Completely bald people, hair start growing because Jesus can make hair grow. Do you believe that? We've had it here. But be careful. Where you, gotta, you know, one guy walks out and his armpits are full of hair. What's going on? You didn't specify. God is a very specific God. So you have to specify things with the Lord. Don't just, you know, Lord, just bring hair, 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 hair. Like Asians, Asians don't have a lot of hair. Imagine this, and they got all hair. Like, what's going on? Then they look Middle Eastern suddenly. What happened? No. So you have to be specific. No, we're just having a good time. Amen. But it, in, the, in the glory, there's, there's joy. A lot of people don't have, they, they, they have the scripture, they have the word of the Lord, but not the actual manifestation. I have the joy of the Lord. Hallelujah. You don't look like it. I have joy because the word says I have joy. Well, I know the word says that, but your face doesn't say that. No, I have it because the word says And they're getting all mad. I don't have anger. I have the peace of the Lord, okay? Okay. I'm happy. This is the happiest day in my life. Wow. <laughs> but the joy of the Lord is, is, is awesome because it's a weapon in the end times. How many want to keep the joy? In the presence of the Lord, there's fullness of joy. When that joy comes, it's like energy comes, the heaviness begins. It's part of the glory. Now, I'm not talking about the laughing revivals of the 90s. That, that's, that, that was just one part. I'm talking about the glory and then the joy in that higher glory. Like, I can tell when someone's laughing on a lower level. Like, ho, 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 ha, ha. I go, that's 94 vintage. There's a higher, there's a higher level. You know what I'm saying? They're the ho. They have different. I go, I got the new ho. I go, ho, ho, ho. That was 94. That's not the new. It was new. It's new. So how many want to go higher? <laughs> But people that don't like joy, that's the religious spirit. They walk in a meeting like this, and, they, and everyone's worse being Becca singing. We're like, whoo, and, like, and there's just one or two, like the judges, self-appointed judges, make sure. Mm, I don't know about that thing on the lady shaking right there. I'm not sure about. Something is, it's okay, but something isn't quite right. And they'll come up to me and tell me, I felt, David, something, just something wasn't right about the meeting. I agree. The Bible says agree with your adversary. I agree with you. I agree. In fact, ma'am, I told her, ma'am, in fact, you agree? Oh, good. Finally, someone on my side. I agree. The moment you walked in, I felt it. And then when you went to the bathroom, it lifted again. I felt good again. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. I think we found out what it is. <laughs> oh, shakala. Shakala kaboom. How do you know that's not tongues? You don't know. Why are you judging me? <laughs> it is a great honor to be here. <laughs> My name is Dr. David Herzog. Some call me apostle. Some call me, I've been called many things, bishops and evangelist and teacher. <laughs> Just don't call me late for dinner and all this. But when I was in Jamaica, they were really big on the, t and I get, we need, to, we need to know what's what. We need to restore the apostolic and the bishop. But in the restoration, it gets a little messy, right? Come on. Like suddenly everyone that wants to be an apostle because that's a cool thing to be, Right. But if you look in the Bible, what does it do to be a prophet? That's not very fun. Get cut in two and all that stuff. Apostles are like the slum of the earth, you know. That's what, that's what uh, Paul said. So you can be careful what you ask for, amen? If you're, if you're destined to be an apostle but you're not there yet, don't take on the persecution of something you don't even have yet. <laughs> you're asking the prince and powers to beat you up as if you are where you're going to be in 10 years. Stay under the radar. Jesus didn't go tell people he was the son of God. He waited until he was ready. He even told him, don't tell him yet. Here, get your heel. But hey, shh, just, just wait a little bit. Put the cart before the horse. And you're wondering why you're getting hit. I'm an apostle now. I have a church of 50 people that I've had for 20 years. That you're a pastor. That's wonderful. Do, what else do you do apostolically? I pastor the people. I go do the weddings. I preach every Sunday. Great. Oh, I got quiet in here. It's like, <laughs> Do you move in signs and wonders? Not really. Do you? No. So how many, the Lord told me, don't worry about the title, just be in me, and people will know what you are by what you do. Focus on the doing and being, and people will just know. That's amazing. You won't have to put the title on, they'll just know. Like When I was in Jamaica, it was a live, we are live in Jamaica, man. Here we are in Radio 95.FFM, 
from Jamaica Live. We have with us a powerful man of God, man. Hallelujah, man. Not Jesus is the one man all the time, man. Not the Rasta man, but the Jesus man. And there's the whole thing they do. And then she asked me, what is your title, brother? And we just had the bishop, and before that we had the apostle. And I said, hmm, let me think. I said, well, everyone is so big on the titles. Call me Pope David. <laughs> I literally, I said this, and a live national radio show. I thought we got cut off. There was no, no one talking at the other end for about a minute or two. I said, hello? And then she started laughing, and it broke the whole thing. I said, not a Catholic pope, but like a Protestant pope that could be married, you know, like being married and stuff. But, <laughs> but God offends the heart to reveal the mind, right? So how many God's been offending you a lot lately? Not now, but like the second, of course, but I mean in general. Whew, man, it's getting quiet. So we're going to go into another realm in a minute here, but. Man, the joy. You know what the joy is? The anesthesia for the operation. So take, so take it. You, you'll need it. Amen. You might need it. <laughs> man. Man, there's a lot of joy here. There's, a, there's most of us are happy and there's a few very uncomfortable people. And they, they're in the middle of the road. They can't. Well, honey, what is going on here? This is my first conference with this Miles guy. I, I don't understand. Nothing's funny. I, I'm feeling very uncomfortable. It's not you. It's the, the other stuff is uncomfortable. You're fine. Oh, my God. Can we get out of here? Well, we can't. We're in the middle of a row. It looks bad. I don't know how long I can handle this, honey. <laughs> man. Mm. Man. Some of you just got delivered just from the laughing right now. <sighs> Jesus sometimes used analogies that were kind of crude, but it worked to get the attention of people. I mean, John the Baptist, he was pretty. But some people, and get this in the right context, you're constipated spiritually. That's why your face looks like this all the time. It's, it's, there's a block. They, let the river flow. There's, there's blockages God needs to unblock. And there could be religious spirits. There could be, you know, some unforgiveness, some whatever, comparing you with the other people. But just let the river flow and you won't be so uptight. You'll be like, Whew. but how many, God, God's trying to de, un, or deconstipate his church so that he can flow through them. Some of us, you feel it on you, but it's not going through you. It, that's why when you pray for people, it's, it's like you're praying. It's not coming out. Okay, I'm going to. Do you feel better now? Uh, teeny, we need little. Not really, but they're, they're lying, but they, don't, but they want you to feel bad. Because you put so much effort on the prayer that they can't say nothing happened. So by faith, a little bit happened. But when the river flows through you, it's like there's no blockages. Does that make sense? Yeah. <laughs> it's not, I guess it's not the best way to start if I'm the first time I've ever been here. I've never been to Tennessee. I should have the fear. I don't have any fear. I, like, I want you to like me, but not that much. Does that make sense? Like, I care a little, but not a whole, like a lot. <laughs> I do care, but not much. I care about you, but not about you loving, like, oh, he was a great guy, or, you know, just be you. The Lord told me just be you in the spirit. It's more fun that way. Amen. So it's a great honor to be in Franklin, Tennessee, and I feel the warmth here and the love of the people, and I love the mixture we got here, like you were saying, red and yellow, black and white, they're all precious in a sight. Amen. We even have a couple white people here, which is cool too, you know, so we welcome you, we welcome white people also. I want them to feel welcome, you know, because there's a lot of anti-white stuff going on. But God loves everybody. <laughs> it's getting quiet in here, man. Now, put your guns down. It's okay. I'm from Arizona. We, we got them too. We got the same, man. But ours are bigger. No, I'm kidding. Man, it's so quiet. I feel, but I feel, as we're laughing, you feel the presence? It's increasing. I'm serious. I'm serious. Something just busts open. Demons hate this realm. And so do religious spirits. So if you're, you love the Lord, but you're offended, then think about it. <laughs> a part of you likes it, and a part of you hates it. Isn't that weird? She's, she's, she's getting revelation, that lady right there in the second row. She's going to preach on that next week. <laughs> At her home church. 
Make sure you do it after you take out the tithes and offerings. Very important. <laughs> or after you do the partners or whatever you do, you know. <laughs> Just kidding. Oh, man, I love it, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Man, I, love, I feel the glory here. Yeah, just stay there, yeah. Mm. <laughs> Woo, man. Some of you are like, well, this is great, but why don't you actually get on with the meeting? This is the meeting right here. The, the, the joy is here, the presence, the glory. Some of you just needed this. Come on. Whoa. <laughs> I'm getting, I feel it. Huh? I'm getting wasted. I'm going to get my own if you don't get it. Woo. If it's too strong, then drink it with a, with a sippy cup or a straw. But <laughs> taste and see the Lord is good. <laughs> Just try it. Close your eyes. Try it. Just take some. <laughs> man. <laughs> Woo, still here. Oh, man. Man. <laughs> this is the best form of, of evangelism is when you're wasted like this. Because you'll say things you won't say sober. <sighs> no longer I who live but Christ in me. I didn't say that. Jesus did through me. Don't get mad at me. Don't shoot the messenger. <sighs> Man. Oh, Becca, I had a word for you during the worship. I said, I stand a second. She's like, oh, no, what's going to be? No, it's a real one. It's a real one. <laughs> Get your hands. Put your hands in the air like you just don't care. Hey, Lord, just touch her, Lord. <laughs> and I saw there's a season of promotion coming. You, you've allowed the Lord to hide you in a sense. People know you, but you could have been way, way, way bigger at different seasons, and you chose a different path. And God's like kept you in the reserve for the last day harvest, where had you been overexposed too early, then the enemy would have blocked you for the last great harvest that's about to happen. So he, you kept you hidden. You could have been a Martha or a Mary. You chose Mary. You chose family. You chose to sit at his feet, even though you're ministering. But you could have chosen another way that would have been way more intense. You would have way more known. But God's whole, held you back. And like even Joseph and Daniel, were, where they even looked like they were going backwards, and suddenly they were at the top of the mountain. And I'd see the Lord, because you've chosen the better part, God's going and just place you without effort. You won't have to work it. You won't have to strive. It'll just, the thing that you gave up, God's going to give back to you, but more in this next season that's coming, says the Lord. I just saw that. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Whew. All right. Well, we're going to do something else, I think. We're going to do a shout of praise in just a second here. And uh, I mean, there's so much as God's going to do, man. Are you, are you good? Are you drunk now? Are you happy? Relaxed? <laughs> Well, how did you get a prophecy out of laughing your head off? I don't know. One time I cast a pair of Jezebel of a lady in Kansas, Topeka, and I was laughing my head off as it came out. I could barely talk. I was, I was so drunk, and the spirit would come out. <laughs> and she was not laughing. He was like, ah! She was. <sighs> Isn't it fun casting out Jezebel spirits? First time it happened, we came back from Bahrain. We were in Dubai, Bahrain, a 30-hour flying to Miami. We arrive, and then I'm preaching a conference with John Paul Jackson and Bobby Connor, two prophets. You know, and then I, we get there, and I'm wasted from exhaustion, and I'm drunk, and in the glory. It's a bad combination. Huh? And caffeine, yeah. Caffeine plus no sleep plus glory equals dangerous meeting. <laughs> and I get in there, and I'm just like, hey, I'm just wasted, jet lagged, caffeinated up, no sleep, but in the glory. And I go, how many Jezebel people do we have here? And now John Paul Jackson wrote a book about the Jezebel spirit. And he, he whispers to, to Bobby Connery, told me after, I wrote a book about it, but I've never seen anybody admit it. And this lady stands up. That's me. And I go, well, let me see if you really are. How many churches have you destroyed, infiltrating their worship team or their leadership or using seduction or your gifts of prophecy to? And she goes, yep. This, this, and she just goes on and on. I go, wonderful. Would you like to be set free? She goes, yes, I would. Which is amazing because it's like Wonder Woman's lasso of truth. Like suddenly, yes, I need to be free. And, and power got hit her. Demons started coming out of her. So it, it's possible. Amen. <sighs> So if you have a Jezebel spirit and you're here tonight, good news. <laughs> it's good news. Amen, it's good news. Sometimes we, do, we had a revival that went for six, eight weeks in Denver in 08. And, and every night we had miracles and we had witches coming and warlocks. And, and I would make Friday night bring a witch night. That's what we did. 
And I would go, hey, how many here are a coven, a Satanist, witch? And how many are from the local coven three blocks down? We want to welcome you. And sheepishly, this lady, two people raise their hand. I go, hey, stand up. We welcome you. Hey, we got two, two, we didn't attack them. We got two Satanists here. We welcome you. We welcome to the revival. We're so happy you're here. And that's it. You know, and they didn't bug him. Then I kept preaching. And then the power got hit. That's crazy, man. And, and then we had someone decapitate a cat and a chicken or something the first few days of the revival, left on the church property. And I said, okay, guys, here's the deal. So you kill the chicken or a cat. Okay, so ring number one, you got a cat with no head. And ring number two, you got Jesus crucified, resurrected. Which one do you think is more powerful? And I didn't scream at him. I just reasoned with him. I said, so you're using the idea of blood sacrifice, which you copied from Jesus, from God. Okay, so let's just some, we'll just compare blood to blood. The purer the blood, the higher the entity you conjure up. Whether it's Satanism, Hitler did 6, Jew, 6 million Jews plus, uh, you know, whatever. So they kill a baby that's innocent, more innocent than we are, but they're still born in sin. I said the highest you could go as a human, the highest we can go is the blood of Jesus, who was the, un, who was the purest. So you get maybe the highest you could get possibly is maybe principalities, powers, you know. And the highest we can get is literally the creator of heaven and earth. The, who's, your, who's your daddy now? And I just, re, I've done meetings like this one time in Char, Charleston, um, was it South Carolina? And the Satanists walked in. They were dressed like it. And they got mad, and they slammed the door and wrote 666 on the bathroom. Just for me, logically, just explaining. Let's, let's compare. Okay, show me what you got, and we'll do ours. Isn't that fun? In France, we had a meeting. So six-month revival. It was the longest in 50 years while we lived in Paris, France, as missionaries. And every night they were coming. And one night was really heavy. Have you get nights where the worship's not breaking open? So you feel, you know, oppression. And I'm like, Lord, and I'm thinking, i got to preach that. What's going on here? Is it sin in the church? Is it someone? And they said, no, there's three witches or two witches here, and they're cursing the meeting. Oh, that's it? Oh, thank you. Jeez, that's easy. It's a problem if there's Christians that are blocking it, you know? So I got up, I grabbed the mic. Now I'm going every night, six months. I'm exhausted. I'm, dri I'm driving back and forth. I said, hey, guys, I'm so glad to revival tonight again. Before we start, I don't want to waste time because I want to go home tonight. So I don't want to sit here all night and try to break it open. So there's three witches here, two witches. Please stand up now so we can deal with this. What? And I go, now, come on. If you don't stand up, I'm going to walk. So I start walking to the crowd. I go, I'm going to find you. I'm looking, I'm looking. And I stand in front of one of this, this lady. She goes, ah! She starts freaking out. Okay, and, 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 and demons start coming out of her. Okay, okay, one down, one more to go. I'll go to the other side of the room. It was, a, it was a white French lady, and then there was a, I guess, a guy from Africa. There's a lot of Africans in France, too. And he was towards the back, and he just went, ooh, and he took off running, and then the Holy Spirit exploded in the meeting. Isn't that fun? So don't fear, that, just, just be. We were in Rome this summer. Stefan and I were preaching in Rome. Miracle signs, wonders. And opening, we're opening these nations back up to the glory because they've been shut down for two years. And we open it up, and we have, like, at least 300 pastors showed up. I mean, that's a lot. For all over Italy, they came, opened the nation up, and they told me there's a thing called the altar of Satan, which they literally opened. I don't know if you heard about this. In Rome this summer, they did a thing called, literally, it's called the altar of Satan, straight out. Right there in the middle of Rome, with an exhibition next to it, a museum of Dante's thing of hell and artifacts of hell. Can you believe this? So like, what do we do? do, do you know, you know, in normal reaction, we bind it, we fast against it, we do. I say, yeah, but listen, I told her, because she's an apostle. We're, we're apostolic too, but we use different names for different tasks. You know, it depends what we're doing. Like, if I'm on an airplane and someone's in Hollywood, they go, what do you do for a living? I don't say, I'm an apostle. I, I go, they go, it depends who's asking, what do you do? And then I relate to them, you know. So, so we're there, and I said, here's what you do. Open up a portal of heaven. Because we always, we always, on, we always reactionary. The demons does something. Then we're like, oh, we're going to react to it. What, what did Elijah do? He goes, do, your, do, do whatever you do, and, and you do yours, I'm going to do mine. Let's see which one wins. See what I'm saying? You open up a portal of heaven. Sure, you still fast, you resist, but you also open up heaven. That's Because otherwise, otherwise you're only on trench warfare. You're, you're, you're binding and you're getting hit and you're, just, you're always in the trenches. Do you like the bee bombers? That's the glory realm. The British during the World War II. Dun, 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 dun. Oh my, Ian, I believe we are under attack. 30,000 feet in the air. Should I push the blue button or the red? May I finish my tea first? Yes, you may. Oh, Earl Grey, God bless the Queen. Now, where were we? Oh, yes, we are back to attacking the Germans. Is, was it the blue or the red? I believe it was the red. Okay, Ian, I'm pushing the red button. Whole city destroyed. You got him. Cheerio, onward. You know, that's... And then the guys in the trenches, I got him. Oh, he got me. Uh, oh, my friend's dead. Uh, bombs. Just like. A lot of you are in trench warfare. You win some, you lose some. You're getting sick. You're getting winning. You're losing. You've got to go up higher. <laughs> glory. The glory realm is where he wants to take us. Oh, moving on up. 
There's old songs. I finally got a piece of the pie. Some of you are older enough to remember that. I remember that because my parents watched it. Okay. <laughs> How many want that? Glory. So the glory realm is really key. Even in courts of heaven, glory is very important. I found that in 05, when I first moved back to the U.S., I discovered the courts of heaven. I didn't know about Henderson or any books. that He, he hadn't written the book yet, and I wrote it later. In fact, Sid even called me when I finally wrote the book a few years later. He goes, wait, this is similar to these other guys. I go, look at the date when I wrote it. We'll look on the, he goes, oh, my God, that was when you caught back. I go, exactly. So what happens is I got lost in the glory realm. Went up to heaven many times. When I get to heaven, there's the throne, there's the sea of glass, there's the books of destiny. Just go to the courts. It's there too. If you're already there, pop in. <laughs> so that's how I found it. And here's the danger with the courts of heaven. It's like Seven Mountains or Book of Jabez. Anything can become a fad. Not, not, not this ministry, but people that don't know the glory. Logic, okay, I logically do, 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 do all the, and nothing happens because they're not there. The, the biggest, one of the biggest things about courts of heaven is courts, obviously, and heaven. <laughs> so a lot of you did courts, but you didn't do heaven. So you're just, you're just doing jury, jury duty for three months. That's why it's taking so long. Does that make sense? But you, when you're in the heavenly realm, it's not, it doesn't take three months. It's, I mean, some can take a little longer, but it's, it's a different realm. Shaka-laka-boom. How many want this realm? So I, I get in this realm, and then, then I, God lets me present my case, but there's it a speed to it. So how do you get in the glory? There's fasting. That's one way. Sometimes you've got to fast to get up there, worshiping, praising. Praise is the fast songs first. Then the, if you only do slow, like, we're at the throne, but no one's at the throne yet. And there's angel, and, and, and sometimes the worship leader's not looking at the people, and they're sleeping. <laughs> no, there's no angels yet. <laughs> so what do you do? You go back to praise. Fast songs, break through, to break through the atmosphere. Then when you don't feel like shouting, yelling, it's like, then you want to just love, oh, love on Jesus, like, like Becca was doing, just intimacy, and the glory comes, like, like we just had the glory come. But how many in your own house do that? Praise him until the spirit of worship comes. Praise is the fast. Praise isn't hallelujah. Only good thing about that song is you know the words. And, and it's not a bad song. I like the song. But anything can be overused. <laughs> praise is, you know, you shout and scream dancing. And you praise and, until you break through. Once you broke through, you don't keep, no, no. Then you just, oh, I just worship. And you worship, worship, worship. And the glory gets stronger, stronger. Then you, here's, that's what I do in my prayer time. Then I wait on him. I don't pull my list out. No, no, leave the list for a minute. And then I wait on him. Oh, this is great, Lord. I'm just... And all of a sudden, he'll show me something, a vision, a nation, a financial thing, a property he wants me to. And, and, I, and as I see that, I just start declaring it. Boom, and it starts opening up. Does that make sense? But a lot of us are doing, be careful not to get mechanical in it. Then there's a place where God goes, what do you desire? Then you go, hey, Lord, well, I've been praying about this. And then you, there's a place. But you got to know the, the protocol for it. You praise. Lord, I love you. Your majesty. You're awesome. Lord. But not doing it, just logically saying it, getting into the presence. Does this make sense? Because the, the glory is the accelerator. A lot of times I think we're doing all this stuff on the anointing faith level only. But we're not hitting the glory. Glory is now. If you walk into heaven and you're 300 pounds, you walk into heaven, boom, you're skinny. You're bald, you get to heaven, you got hair. You got a big tumor in your, in your body. The moment you walk into heaven, how long will it take for it to go? How long you think? The moment you're in, boom. So how about prophecies over your life putting into the glory? Boom. You start walking to a realm called it is finished. So the prophecy actually was just telling you what he already created, and you walked into what already was. Your prophecies aren't even coming to pass. They're already existing on another, not in the metaverse, but another plane. And when you walk into it, boom, you realize it was there all along. So a lot of your, how many of you have big prophecies over your life? You're waiting for it to come to pass. How many are you waiting for it? That's probably why it hasn't happened yet, because you're waiting. They went in to the promised land. Does that make sense? Anyway, I'll, I'll tell you this stuff later. It's all in my books. That was just an ad for my books. No. <laughs> but the greatest revelation is, get my books. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> hey, I got a few here. Let's see here. Secrets of the Glory by Dr. David Herzog, who had a show with Stephen Herzog called The Glorious Zone. This is my latest book, Limitless Glory. The newest, newest just came out. There's another dimension. Not dementia. There's a difference. If the trees are talking back at you, that's not the same one, okay? How do you know the difference? Check the medication. 
the courts of heaven. But we see people, we see people set free of dementia. I got one on the courts. This is one I wrote. But it's not just courts. There's a whole on the blood. Because blood is technology, right? So when you go to courts, the enemy sometimes doesn't accuse you, but accuse you because of your bloodline, stuff that your blood. You know the whole blood. You blood? Hey, blood. What's up, blood? That's a slang, American slang thing. But there's some truth to that, too. Are you blood? Okay, it's getting quiet here. Some of us white people are getting nervous now. Don't say that. Shh. Don't say blood. Eh? I don't like the way you said that. The courts of heaven, angels, new DNA. How many want a new DNA? Um, quantum glory, sound and glory, how sound and glory create matter. Sinking with heaven, how I want to sink with heaven. And, and uh, vibrational glory, how to increase your vibrational frequency in the glory. So, so everything moves in vibrations, right? Speed. You fast and pray, it's going faster. You worship, it's, there's an increase of the vibration of God's sound and glory. And you get to a certain point where it's going so high, and then you speak to a cancer, boom, it's gone. But when you're on a low-level vibrational frequency, you just, you know, pray a little bit, you read a little bit, and you, you pray over it, nothing's, you have to like, you, you know. Some people are bald because they had hands laid so hard for years. <laughs> like, like there's just the outline of a man's hand on there. Because they, they push, they think the, the hands, it's not just the hands, it's the, what level of glory is it coming from? Does that make sense? So... You're not bald. Your head's bald. You're not. You're different. But, but the glory realm. Oh, my God. Yeah. <sighs> Sometimes I'll use humor to make a point so you get the revelation. How many again? It's, you're getting it now. You're not bored now. You're like, ah, what's he going to say next? <laughs> Jesus had different ways of operating and communicating. Amen? One time Jesus actually spoke to a tree. He had, Jesus had a conversation with a tree. It was more of a monologue, but he did talk to a tree. He went over to a tree and started talking to it. He goes, hey, I want some uh, figs, please. The vending machine was out of order, apparently. And he goes, no, I said, I want, and man, the apostles are listening to this. I said, I want some, this is probably what, he, I, I want figs. Please give me figs now. What? Oh, it's not the season for figs? Give me a break. If you wanted to, you could make figs right now. <laughs> oh, now you're going to give me the silent treatment? I can't talk. I'm a tree. <laughs> Don't give me that. I mean, they're, they're listening to this. Okay. Die, sucker. And he tells his homies, let's go. So they leave. And the next day, the apostles are like, wait, either he needs a vacation or, or they go check it. The next day, they go check, and the tree's completely dead. So the higher the glory, the, the more powerful your words are. That's where the authority comes from, whatever the realm that you're in. Jesus casts out one word, 6,000 demons. The word was boo. No, it was go. But some Christians use 6,000 words to try to cast out a tired demon. They sound like a demon after four hours, six hours in the middle of the night. I said, I'm, I'm Bishop Dr. Apostle. The demon said, I don't care what title you put it for your name. No, I, I'm, I'm, I'm the Apostle, Apostle, Dr. Bishop. In the name, I command you. And the demon's like, is he one of us? No, no, no. Who's talking? Are we talking or is he talking? Because you burnt... It's like burnout. It's not something's wrong. <laughs> After six, eight hours, and then you use the nuclear option, or as President Bush used to say, the nuclear option. So the nuclear option was, if you don't come out, uh, I'm going to send you to my mother-in-law's. No! Mass deliverance. No, I'm kidding. I love my mother-in-law. She's awesome. But I'm saying, we use these things, you know, lake of fire, whatever, like buttons, right? We try Come on, how many have done some deliverances that took too long? So the, in the glory realm, there's a speed to everything. The anointing is like battery. You know, you, you charge it up. Okay, you charge up your laptop or your iPad. You use it, and then it starts dying, dying, warning, plug back in. That, that's, you go to outreach, you're praying for people, and then pretty soon you're like, i got to go back to the hotel. I'm done. Like, there's no more juice, right? We've all been there. And if you go past it, then you're just in the flesh or just burnout. But, but, but in the glory realm, you're plugged into heaven charging your battery while you're ministering. So I can come back from a meeting like this where I, if I'm ministering and I'm charged, I come back and I'm vibrating for four hours. I can't go back to sleep. Old days, I, pr I prepare all week, fast, pray, get in the word, do my Sunday service, miracles, glory, good message, and then I'd be exhausted. That's why most pastors, Mondays are day off, right? Rightly so. But in the glory realm, Catherine Kuhlman, she couldn't only sleep four hours a night. That's not healthy. But, but the point is the, the, the glory realm is, is that's where the creative, your body recreates. That's where you shall never die. Those who eat my flesh, drink my blood, shall not experience death. Isn't that awesome? There's, there's going to be unkillables in the last days. 
in the last, last days, there's remnants of people. Some are called to be martyrs, but some have faith. Hey, I, I, this is what I'm claiming. Pray that you may be counted worthy to escape all these things come on the earth. Death by pestilence, by coronavirus, wars, Russia, China, invasions, uh, economic disasters, persecution. You, know, you, have, you have persecution, but you'll be really hard to kill. How many want that one? And even if you do die, you might just pop back up. Like Lazarus. John with a high. These are glory guys. These apostles were like glory. They weren't apostles that we think of apostles. Like, I'm an apostle because I got 200 people that follow under my, my covering that follow my ministry only, but without the power. You see what I'm saying? They, they were apostles. They were taken to heaven. They had supernatural. They weren't necessarily all, all pastoring churches or planning, but they were apostolic. And John, Island of Patmos, boiled. You would have been a French fry, and him it was a jacuzzi. Oh, did you bring bubbles? Wow, I'm in prison here. I didn't know. Maybe it's my birthday. Thank you so much. Paul, he, Paul probably died a few times. He was, he, was, he was executed, stoning. He got stoned before they legalized marijuana. He did. And, and when, he, you know, when he got stoned, it hurt. He, that, that's execution. You don't have a t-shirt, been stoned in the old days. You know, uh, here's the marks. No, there's no people that come back from stoning. You, they, here, you keep throwing rocks at their head until they're dead. That's how it works. He popped back up. But he was smart. He's Jewish. He waited till they left, and he went back in his body. If you're going to come back, wait till they're gone. Really terrible if you got to be killed dead twice in the same hour. But, but he came back. So You see this amazing. He got shipwrecked. I don't know if you know how to swim, but he learned fast. Then, then a cobra or Malta. We're going to go to Malta. And may, uh, bit him. A, a venomous. He should be dead. He's, al he's back alive. I mean, this guy just can't kill him. How many want to be one of the unkillables? Pray that you may be kind of worthy to escape these things. Shaka laka, boom, boom. So the, it's going to get very hairy on the earth, and you're in the earth, but not over the earth. It's going to get, especially this year, it's a Schmitta year, it's a seven year cycle. Every seven years, I, I was just Googling, the Lord started reminding me about the seven year cycles. So I go, okay, what about 29 crash? I Googled it during the worship. 29 crash happened around September, October, Rosh Hashanah time. How about the 87 crash? Same time. 2001, same time. 2008, same time. 2022. Same time. So this year is a Schmitta year where God judges the world Babylonian economic system. But if you know ahead of time what's coming, that's where the greatest millionaires are made too. 29 crashed the ones who knew, either from inside knowledge or from the Holy Spirit. So, so Egypt gets violently shaken. Price of houses are, are, are terrible. Frogs in every home. Sea turns to blood. I mean, it was bad. Housing prices were not doing good in Egypt. Okay. The interest rates are really bad. <laughs> but the Jews, for some reason, who were slaves, glory, light, darkness in Egypt, they didn't have generators. But Holy Spirit, the Jews had, you know, air conditioning was created in the time of the Exodus. <laughs> and, and heating, supernatural heating. They had the cloud by day in the 100 degree weather in the desert, fire by night. Desert is freezing at night. If you live in the desert, super not. I mean, it's getting quiet in here. So with there's stuff coming this year, this, this year especially, there's huge cataclysmic shaking stuff coming, but it doesn't have to affect you. Now, some of you don't want to say that. Go, oh, we're, we're in faith. We're not in fear. No, no, we're not in fear, but it's also the same thing. You have to warn people. But the people that usually warn people always say it with fear. There's something coming this year. You better get as much guns as possible, grenades, and even, even you can buy a tank on eBay, put it in your backyard, and, uh, and they're, but they're saying it with fear, like, store enough food for, for 20 years? 20? That stuff is bad for you after a while, you know. You talk about constipation. I mean, I can eat it for a few days. But what, I'm, not, no, I'm not saying not to store food. Some people really should. There's some places you need to. But I'm saying is you have to follow the Lord, but you're doing it in faith, not fear. Some places God's going to say, pull out here, do this, buy gold, buy land, buy property. you got to hear the Lord. But, in, but then you keep going. Agabus told him the, pro, the famine's coming to the Roman Empire. They didn't make that their whole ministry after that. They took an offering for those who would be most affected in Jerusalem and continued on with the gospel. And when the things began to happen, Acts 2, Acts 4, they knew when it was time to buy, when it was time to sell. They, at the time, it was time to sell their houses while the property values were high. They sold them, used the money for the ministry, the widows, the, and then just kept going. How many want to just keep rolling with the punches? No matter what happens, 
and the darker it gets, the more glory. Look at Canada. It looks really bad, but I'm just getting secret videos of open-air worship glory services in Canada right now with the truckers. They're not showing that on the news. They're singing. These songs are singing here, and people are praising the Lord in the street. There's a revival going on. So whatever happens, whew, is this exciting? So there's no fear of death because we have authority over death, like Katie shared. No fear of getting taken out before your time. There's a lot of get out of jail, get out of jail cards in the Bible. You couldn't keep him there too long. Remember that? How many are not fear? No fear of death. How many couldn't care less, but you could care more, but you don't? All right. We're going to do a shout of praise real quick, and then we're going to go into some miracles. How many have got some revelation? I'm not saying my message yet, but it would just, it's almost time to go. But, uh, <laughs> but we're going to go into some miracles here in a minute, and then, we're, and then we're going to do an offering and all that stuff. But, but oh man, the glory is so strong here. How many love the glory? Glory, if you put your prophetic word in the glory, you'll speed it up. Okay, I had a, we moved it from Sedona to Phoenix in 2018, from the north to the, to the capital. And I moved there, like, what am I doing here? It's 100 degrees, Lord. I liked it better up there. And I don't need to be here. And he goes, no, fast and praise. I fast 21 days with Stephanie, our team. And God shows us, I want you, your first assignment in the Phoenix area, yeah, what is it? Is rent the ASU Sun Devil Stadium, 50,000 C Stadium. What? That's ridiculous. He goes, no, why would they, why? I just moved here. The pastor, how the pastor's going to follow me to do this? Oh, yeah, I just moved here. You need to all follow me as we do a stadium together. <laughs> See how you laughed? That's how I thought. Why will they follow me? He goes, because I told you to do it. That's why. All right. So I pray, and then Lou Engle comes and preaches at our conference. Where's that Sun Devil Stadium? I saw a stadium. I saw. Okay, it's another confirmation. <laughs> no, that's how he is. Like, he's six-pack, man. Sit-ups. Crunches. No, he's awesome. Rabbis probably have six packs. Rabbis in Israel, they they're they're nonstop doing sit-ups, man. It's Holy Ghost way of losing weight. Look, Lou, he's always skinny. It's amazing. And he fasted like crazy. But um, so I said, okay. So, and then, then then we organize. We start doing it, and money starts coming in supernaturally. The one guy just one lady a few days before. I still need, I was still short a quarter million dollars. That's just the last payment. That's not the whole. And then one lady comes up to me, the last pastor meeting two days before, they're going to cancel the event if I don't come up with the 250 within two, they were going to cancel it. She goes, uh, excuse me, there's all these pastors at our pastor's meeting I'm doing, comes, can I talk to you? I go, oh yeah, sure, at the end I'm talking to this guy, I got to talk to this guy. So she comes up at the end, I'm just an old lady, I'm not a pastor, I shouldn't really be here. Oh, it's okay, but uh, I think I'm supposed to give some for your thing. I go, okay, how much you want to give? Well, I think I'm supposed to give $400,000. Well, how much? Let, well, let me pray about it. Yes, I think you should. And, uh, because in the glory, you get answers quickly. <laughs> How many want a seasonal portal? Times of, like the feasts are seasonal portals, geographical places. I don't want to look. Um, aligning with heaven. Oh, I just said that. <laughs> Unleashing God's DNA. And my wife's got another DNA one. I don't know if it's here, but got, go to the website, theglorious.org. Um, well, this is a pretty good one. But you don't know what this one is. How to get set free from a, No, I'm kidding. Entering the glory zone. One, one, one guy came up for the book. He didn't know what it was. And I go, you don't know what this is. I just want it. How to be set free from a gay spirit. No, it's not me. <laughs> Another lady came up. I want it. No, you, you don't know. Uh, how to be free from a Jezebel spirit. No, I'm kidding. No. Secrets of the glory. All right. All right. The rest, the rest you got to... I'm sorry. We'll pray for you later. Okay. <laughs> The rest we got to buy. All right, we're going to go into this glory realm here of, of creative stuff. This is fun. Oh, man, there's so much revelation. We'll go, we'll do, I'm speaking in the morning, we'll do more. But how many, again, you want the glory, not just the gift? You want not just the anointing, you want the glory. You don't want just the battery pack. If it runs out, what are you going to do? You stay connected. And how, here's the secret of this. You're not always ready. You're not always in a meeting preparing to preach. You're at the grocery store. You're at Walmart. You can't go, oh, let me go pray for six hours and fast. The, the guy's, you know... You're in the gym, and the guy goes, oh, right back. Oh, I feel weird, embarrassed. He doesn't know. You just do it. Dude, can I pray for your back? Who are you? I don't know. It doesn't matter who I am. I've seen Jesus heal people. He's in pain. He's going to say, okay. Or you give a word. How many want to just be in the realm? And, and then, so it's like when I pray, I don't just pray to be a meaning. I just pray to pray. Like, like I'm, how many want to just be in the glory? Some of you can experience supernatural transportation. Where you're, you're drive, we've had this happen numerous times. We're driving an eight-hour drive, boom, we're there an hour and a half. Driving an hour in New Zealand, boom, 15 minutes, we're across the sheep that blocked our way, and somehow we made it. All, all this stuff, God bends time in the glory. 
How many know that? So point A, point B, it takes, you know, so many hours to drive, but you're in the glory where there's no time. God starts to bend the time continuum. Point A and point B starts to bend and become the same time. He bends time in the glory. There's all this stuff. How many want this? So in the courts of heaven, you have more authority when you're in the glory realm because you're in you're courts of heaven. you got to be in he- Go to heaven, guys. Seated in heavenly places. Go to the heavenly realm, and there's a place there where you can rule and reign in the heaven. But do it from there. Does that make sense? It'll, take, it'll be a lot faster. Then, Lord, I ask. No, you, you go up there. Who's going to go up? How do you do that? The only way to do it is get on my books. No, I'm kidding. And, and get uh, some my, my iPad died, which I knew it would. So that's why I have a backup on my iPhone. Yay. See, thank God for technology. He talks about tech, uh, Miles, Francis Miles talks about technology a lot. Amen. I love it. The technology of the spirit. You know this. The blood is technology. One drop of the blood. They can take your blood and they can see what's in your bloodline now. They can see like sicknesses that your family had. So how many, how many have broken generational curses? You know that, right? But a lot of people don't do is liberate the generational blessings after they break the curse. You have grandfathers that, that were wealthy or that were in business or finance or new languages. Or, and it's not in you because it's been broken. So you go back on the bloodline. You say, now, Lord, I liberate off my bloodline that which I should have had down the family line. And all of a sudden, I started doing that. And I started because I have a grandfather, a Jewish grandfather that spoke 12 languages. Suddenly, I'm learning languages. I'm learning Russian super fat. My brain is, one of them was a scientist in Vienna. He probably knew Einstein during the, before World War II. And suddenly, I'm getting equations. And I'm, getting, I'm waking up with, I go, honey, I understand time travel and space travel. As I'm waking up, like, it's, you know, it's just this and that. I'm like, what the heck is going on? Start liberating the blessings off the bloodline. Generational, wealth, gifts, talents. They took a, they took a, a dog I heard, and they cloned it, and the dog knew the tricks and secret trails of the original dog because blood has memory. Heart transplants, I've heard stories. Where they, this, this hillbilly gets a heart transplant, and he speaks perfect Chinese. There's probably some guy in the middle of Tennessee in the, in the boonies. Hey, Bob. Got, barely speaks English, suddenly speaking Chinese. I mean, that's, that's supernatural. So, so the, blood, the blood of Jesus goes in, and not only does he break off the curse and you, you have him liberate the blessings and your blood, inheritance and blessing, then you ask for the, the memory of the blood of Jesus' blood. The same power that rose him from the dead to be activated in your mortal body. That's what Katie was talking about last night. That's where the, the, it's hard to kill you. Superman, they kill, you shoot him and just... How many want that? Or you get coronavirus, but just do a headbutt, it comes back off. You get bit by the serpent, but you, you, you overcome it. To those who, not to those who never get attacked, to those who overcome. I'll give to eat the tree of life. How many want to be overcomer in the last days? You overcome antichrist, spirit, persecution, sickness, famine, wars, fear. <laughs> I'm, the one about Russia is kind of interesting. Every week, they're going to attack tomorrow. Next week, Biden, they're going to attack tomorrow. Next week, they're attacking today. <laughs> tomorrow, I meant next week. <laughs> In April, we still think the Russians are thinking of attacking. <laughs> well, why are you worried about that? I'm going to keep winning more souls while we're waiting for the attack, you know. Now, there is a, Chuck Pierce did say in spring there was a possible war with China. Could, could it be that the Russia's the diversion for China doing something? Could it be that suddenly we're focused on Russia and all of a sudden Taiwan? Oh, wait, what? What's going on there? I'm not prophesying it. I'm just saying, could it be? Amen. All right. Are you ready for this? I'm going to do a shout. We're going to count to three. I'm going to do a shout of praise. And we're going to shout to God, and we're going to sing the Spirit just for a few minutes. And I'm probably going to give words of knowledge. If the word is for you, I want you to grab it and run with it. How many are going to do that? Amen? We're going to shout first. Some of you don't like to shout. I don't shout. I'm the stoic type. I'm just not emotional. I don't believe in shouting. Well, if you get electrocuted, suddenly you shout. <laughs> Put your finger in the electrical socket. Amazing. Suddenly you become the emotional type. In a split second. So I'm just saying, do it. Where is that in the Bible? Shout unto the Lord all the earth. Amen. So just, just do it. Like the old cowboy days. We live in a cowboy country. You're kind of, ca- well, your farmers dress like cowboys. We actually, cow- we have ranches where we are. Not many farms. And they would, the cowboy, okay, one cowboy at the bar. Do you shoot? No. Do you dance? No, I don't dance. You do now. Whoa. And that's, and that's how that dance came. You know the, you know the dance that they do? Because they were shooting at him. Learn, quick learner in the, when you're in trouble. <laughs> that's, how, that's how white people learn to dance. Because <laughs> the cowboy days, you know, we had, we, we're not from Africa. You guys are natural, just like Hispanic culture. They're just natural. White people, it's like all white church. Look, Martha, I'm dancing. My hands are up. That's not dancing. 
I'm dancing. No, that's not, I mean, you go to black church, the little kid's like, he's like break dancing for Jesus. Five, five-year-old, and you do it with an attitude. You got a problem with this? You're like, so I'm saying is we need each other. Because every race, tribe, and tongue has a different gift to bring the body of Christ. If your worship team is not great, get a black person on your worship team. At, at least one. At least one. Come on. All right. It's quiet in here. I, I know we're not supposed to say that because we're technically still in the South. But the Lord breaks all that stuff. There's not, in the glory realm, it's not race. You're a spirit put in a body. That's, that's just for why you're on the earth. Use it for, Martin Luther King used it for the, what he had. Paul was the underdog. He was Jewish. That wasn't the cool thing to be in the Roman, when Romans taken over your country. But he used it for the Lord. To the Jews, I'm a Jew. And they throw him in jail as a Jew. And he goes, I'm a Roman. We're talking about, I'm not Jew. I'm a Roman citizen. I have a right to not be thrown in jail without a trial. Oh, sorry. Use everything you are for the Lord. Amen. Mahesh Shavda once said, I'm going to get all, I'm going to start claiming money from the government because I'm an American Indian because he looks Indian like from India. <laughs> and I'm an African American because he was born and raised in Africa, but he's American. So he, he was using all those. I'm, I'm African American. I'm Native. I'm Indian American. Yeah, he's just trying to get all the benefits, you know. <laughs> it, was, it was funny. All right. All right. You guys ready? We're going to count to three. If I offended you at all, it was for you, just so you know. All right. <laughs> So don't, don't worry. If you're wondering, is, it, is, that, is that about me? Are you offended? Yeah, it was for you. If you're not offended, it wasn't for you. That's, that's one way to know if it was for you. I'm offended. I think it's not about me. How offended are you? Very. It's for you. But it's awesome because God spoke to you and you heard it. Isn't that awesome? Wow. He spoke to you and you related to it. You reacted, but it, that's beside the point. You got a word from God. Isn't that awesome? He's speaking to your heart. Amen. All right. Okay, we're going to count to three. I'm going to do a shout of praise, and I'm going to go right to word of knowledge. If it's for you, just, you know what I do? Just get up and run. I'm saying, if you don't know what to do, if I say someone's, you know, got this or that, do something you couldn't do before. Run around, whatever you got to do. Walk in the frame. How many will do that? Ephesians 2.10. God, God declared it, and the frame, the, God created the earth. Ephesians 2.10, the worlds are framed by the spoken word of God. Gl- glory plus sound creates. Genesis 1, spirit glory was hovering. God spoke, and there was. Which came first, the word or the spirit? Which came first, the chicken or the egg? Which came first, the word or the spirit? It got quiet the first time. It was like, spear, word, spear. Because I saw that. You went, spirit, spear, word. Word, spirit. Spear, word, spirit. Watch, spirit, word. Some of you just went, word, word, word. And then I went, that's right, and you're going to go, see? No, the word, no, the spirit was hovering, and then he spoke. Even God himself wouldn't speak till his own spirit preceded him. See, the presence of the glory, then you speak into it. Why do you think every worship service around the world is praise and worship first? Because it brings the glory. Then the word goes into that cloud and creates. Some of you are dry. You're confessing, but nothing's happening. Shakalaka, boom. You're confessing, but there's no presence. Worship him. Intimacy. I just love it. I just want to be with the king. And then he comes, and then there's a time you decree a thing and shall be established. Glory plus sound equals create a miracle. Glory plus sound equals the prophecy coming to pass fast. Glory is the accelerator. Are you ready for this? All right, I'm going to count to three. One. Even the most boring anal person here, I want you to just shout, scream, like, no, I just sit on my bump. And I just, no. Just. Two. When I say three, I want to stand up and shout like you never shouted. Something's going to open up here, and we're going to have some stuff happen tonight. Two and a half. Two and three-fourths. Two and three-fourths and a half. Three! Hallelujah! (laughs) Praise you, Lord! (laughs) After. Praise you, Jesus! We shout to you, mighty God! King of kings, Lord of lords! Mighty King! Hallelujah! We worship you, Lord! Praise you, mighty name! Praise you, mighty Lord! King of everything, hallelujah, Lord, we shout to you, we shout to the King of kings, we shout to you, King of kings, light up you to roar in this place. Oh, 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 oh. we shout to you, oh God, we worship you and we sing, holy, 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 we shout to the King of kings. We praise the Lord of Lords. 
We praise the mighty King, Lord Sabio, the Lord of oh, Lord of the angel armies, King of glory, enter in. Just begin to worship Him. King of glory, enter in. I want to be with you again. I want to look in your eyes. I want to hear your voice. I want to feel your warm embrace in the secret place. King of glory, enter in. Glory, glory, glory. I feel like I'm in heaven's realm right now. I feel like I'm walking on streets of gold. <laughs> I want to take a swim in the crystal sea. Woo! Jesus, Yeshua, just you and me. I want to hear the myriads and myriads of angels singing. Holy, holy, holy. The angels lay down their crowns. The earth begins to shake and lightnings and thunderings and rumblings. And then the cherubim and the seraphim and the living creatures around the throne begin to worship, begin to move their wings, begin to hover around the throne of God. Ooh, ooh, I can hear the angels sing, and I can hear realms and harmonies, melodies I've never heard before, because I'm walking in heaven's door. I'm walking in that realm of glory. I'm walking through the door. Because I heard a voice say, come on up here. Come on up and I'll show you things you've never seen before. Because Franklin, Tennessee, I saw you knocking on my door. I saw you knocking. I saw you knocking on my door. Realms and realms of glory. Realms and realms of glory. Realms and realms of glory. Woo. Supernatural strength. Miracles and healings and signs and wonders, sudden deliverance, and every need is met, every debt is canceled. Let it be on earth as it is in heaven. Lord, release your angels tonight that operate in your glory. Thank you for your miracle angels and healing angels, deliverance angels, signs and wonders angels. For that atmosphere shifting. Atmosphere shifting now. The atmosphere is shifting now. Atmosphere is shifting now. I'm going higher and higher than I've ever been before. I'm walking in a heaven's door. Someone's foot is being healed. You, you have pain. It's the bones in your feet. You can't stand without pain. It hurts so much. You stand 20, 30 minutes. You got to sit down. God's healing your feet right now. Who's that? Feet. If that's you, I want to just get up and run around the room. Also, if you have bone spurs, flat feet, anything with your feet, be healed in Jesus' name. Healed in Jesus' name. Asthma, go! Just get up if you got asthma and run. Rotator cups, shoulders, be healed right now. Every arthritis, go. I see arthritis is lifting. Just try it now. Weight loss, miracles, weight loss, dropping the weight three, four, five, six, seven dress sizes. 10, 20, 30 pounds. Metabolism accelerate. Liposuction angels be released. Woo! Let it drop, 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 drop. Hypothalamus reset. Tumors, cysts, cancers, die. A stiff neck just got healed. A disc in the lower back is healed right now. I see a disc in the lower back be recreated. Every back condition be healed. You got a chiropractor's every back. Hip replacement. Knees, cartilage, grow. It's like bone to bone. Get up and run or walk fast. A heart condition is being healed. A stint in your heart. God's re-healing your heart right now. Metals in your body. Ankles be healed. Ankles and metal plates and screws go back to bone. Run and not be weary, walk and not faint. Wait upon the Lord, renew my strength. Ears, open up. I saw a right ear open up. Cataracts, floaters, spots. Go, nearsighted, farsighted. 
reading glasses, eyes be healed right now. Somebody with a huge nose, it's so big, but it's not a sickness, so don't worry about it. Tennis elbow be healed. Tennis elbow be healed. You lost. of Jesus. I see a growth on someone's neck, like a goiter or something. Is that you? Okay, just stand there. Lift your hands. Someone, yeah. Close your eyes. Lord, touch! Goiter, go! And let the dog be touched too while we're at it. Let the age reversal on the dog. Give the dog 10 more years, Lord. In dog years. <laughs> a vocal cords just got healed. Vocal cords just got healed right now. Start checking your body right now. Some of you are like, oh my God. As you start checking, it'll start popping. Check it like 10 times. If it's something you can't check, like your hair, have people around you look at it. Check your teeth, get a mirror. Yes, and with the, with the hair, like if you look at it, get three or four people to keep staring at it, and eventually it'll start to shift. It's gonna start pop, you can, things are gonna start popping. Check your waistline, check your back, check. Check things I didn't even call out, things that you know is wrong with you. Just start, Lord, I receive this now. I had, I had people grow taller in our meetings. I never called it out. Even in Jerusalem, it happened. This guy, there's two ladies grew this tall. And then the Israeli security asked me to pray for them. Start checking your body right now. Check your breathing, your nasal. Check your teeth. Some of you might have teeth gr have grown where there was no teeth. Ooh, start checking. I see tumors and lumps, cysts. Die. Go. A skin, skin rash, spots on your skin. Jesus paid for that all 39 stripes. I see the skin being healed right now. Depression, go! Man, the there's a TMJ, your jaw, locked jaw is being healed. That The clicking in your jaw goes. Now do something you couldn't do before. Start Maybe as your knees, you couldn't run. You know, up and down, check, just start checking. Don't just sit there like a bump on a log. I mean, like, if you have some wrong... Besides that wrong attitude, but like wrong physical problems, start checking. If you have a wrong attitude, we'll, we'll deal with that later. But just check what's wrong with you physically right now. Are you checking? Some of you couldn't stand your tippy toes. You're a dancer and you can't, it's like frozen. Start, start to you know, dance a little bit. Even if you're white, yeah, I believe you can do it. I'm just messing. <laughs> no, they dance in Nashville. They do the, you know, yeah, yeah. I saw it on TV. Maybe take your reading glasses off and start to read. See if you can read. Start to bend down. Start to check, check your arthritis. Your ears, if one ear was, was hard of hearing or deaf, plug up the good ear and see if the other ear is better. If it was one eye, plug up the good eye and see if the other eye. Start to look right now. Right now, start to act on it. This is the faith part. The glory came. The spoken word came. The frame is created, but there's one last step. You have to step in faith. The, you just, just step in. It's there. Just grab it. It's right there. And start to stick it like the persistent widow. Or Elijah goes, look at the cloud. There's no cloud. No, look again seven times. Be aggressive. Like, no, I'm getting this tonight. Don't just do one time and go, oh, well, maybe tomorrow. No, no, no. You say, I'm getting it now. Be, be like aggressive. 
Like the Africans are very aggressive, right? But do that in the glory, you, you got it. Amen? Are you checking? Even the dog is checking. He's looking around. We got dogs here. We got dogs there. God loves dogs. I think some dogs are going to heaven with us. <sighs> now, how many can tell now something physically just happened to you? Raise your hand if already you could see something has been healed or a miracle in your body. Just go like this real high. If you just got a miracle. Okay, everyone that got their hands up, I want you to come up and testify real quick. Just come up there. Someone will help you out on the stage. Yeah, come on up. Everyone that raised their hand, you got to come up. Because when you testify, it seals the miracle. It also testifies to the powers of the air over this region. When you demonstrate the power, that's another way the prince powers and powers get diminished. It's not just talking about it, but when you demonstrate the power, it, 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 it's talking to the rulers and prince powers and powers. They ever came by the, the, by the word of their testimony. Amen. So when you testify, it shifts something in the region. Everybody say shift. Everybody say shift happens. Just say it correctly. Don't misspell the word shift. Okay. If you say it too fast, it sounds like someone else. <laughs> Some of you are like, I don't know if the Holy Spirit liked that joke. Let me check. No, he's still here. He loved it. So it was something in you that didn't like it. All right. <laughs> All right. What happened to you? You started talking about cartilage being put back. Hold on one second. Maybe we'll do a little bit lower just while they're talking so we can hear. And uh, as I was running around, my knee started clicking. My knee started to click, and I could feel it. And I was like, wow, I think the cartilage grew back. Wow. Because I could feel it multiple times. It was like, and I, it was just, it was like amazing. I'm like, I feel great. And my feet stopped hurting because I started claiming everything after that. I'm like going, I want it all, Lord. I wanted, I wanted my, I said, I don't want any more gray hair. So I'm going to have, and I had asked that before I sat down. And I said, I don't want to have gray hair ever again. I want it to my original color. So I believe it. I receive it. So you got your feet, you said, and your cartilage. It doesn't feel bone to bone anymore. Because before it would be like that knocking, right? I, I had surgery and everything. And now I feel like the cartilage is there. Because I felt it, like, I felt things clicking in there and maneuvering. Wow. And now it's like a cushion. And now it's a cushion. Wow, that's a creative miracle. Thank you, Jesus. Woo, just stand right here. Uh, stand there, lift your hands, close your eyes. Close your eyes, and just let the Holy Spirit, there's a glory all over her. So I'm going to get out of the way of the Holy Spirit. And Lord, just stretch out your hands over her now. The oil of the Holy Spirit just coming on her. Woo, that hot oil. There it is. He's pouring an oil on you right now. Yep, he's pouring something into you besides the healing. Oh, it's, it's hot oil. He's going deep, deep, deep. Deep calls into deep. He's healing the deep recesses of your heart now. Whew, those last little areas from 10, 12 years ago. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. You know, even when you get touched on your emotions, that's just as important as a physical. Amen. God, and just, I just see oil. God's putting some new, a new oil on her, new mantle on her. Thank you, Lord. Man. Whew, Lord, I just ask the angel of the Lord that's on her now to continue the ministry. Yeah, continue it and even increase it now. There's a presence, a heavy kabod of glories on her right now. Yeah. Yeah, just stay there. Don't even leave until, yeah, there he is. More, Lord. It's increasing. <laughs> yeah, she's getting her own little revival while we're watching. <sighs> <laughs> Heavenly realms are opening now. Heavenly realms are opening now. You can bring the next one up, but she can stay up until, until it lifts. Yeah, yeah, she just, you can stay up there. Just get the next one. What's happening to you? You had a back problem? And then my, my hands. So what, how did God heal your back? What happened? I don't, I mean, I can move and I can, I can dance. You couldn't do that before? No. What happened to your hands? Well, they, they're, they move. You couldn't do that before? Real stiff. Real stiff. I had real stiff, or I clean for a living. So they, they, um, they're just real stiff. Praise the Lord. And I mean, I, I, That's a miracle. And thank you, Lord. <laughs> Amen. Hey, guys, if, if, if you see a resurrection or just an arm is healed, you don't go, oh, that's nothing. I've seen bigger than that. Don't, that grieves the Spirit. Don't do that. If a headache gets healed or you see a leg grow out, it's the same Holy Spirit. So you can't compare Holy Spirit to Holy Spirit. You can't go, well, that's nothing. I learned, Catherine Coleman would say that. Don't grieve the Spirit. Be thankful. Praise Him for every little thing He does. And if you do, He does bigger, bigger, bigger. So no, don't get spoiled. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Who, who else got one? You got one? All right. If you get raised from the dead, come tell us. We want to know. It'll, it'll encourage other dead people that they can come back too. What happened? 
you get raised from the dead? No, but my knee. Um, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I was healed not only from my sinuses, but I was also healed my eyes. My glasses are back there. In 2021, I had surgery. I had a torn meniscus, and I was a runner. I used to run five, six miles, seven days a week. And so I hadn't been running due to this torn meniscus that I had, the surgery that I had in 2021. And it prohibited me from doing the things that I needed to do with my knee. But I didn't even get up for my knee, but I got healed anyway. Wow. So, so I got eyes, sinus, and my knee. Praise yeah. God. Amen. Thank you, Lord. That's awesome, sister. Wow, glory. I like your hat. What's that say? Washington, D.C. Oh, the United States of America. Washington, D.C. I've been there. Praise the Lord. Oh, he's military. Praise the Lord. Well, God bless you, sister. You can bring the next one. That's awesome. Come on up. Woo. What happened to you? Well, you started talking about feet, and my feet have been bothering me since I got here because I'm from Florida. I live in flip-flops. <laughs> yeah, flip-flops are terrible for your feet, by the way. No, they don't like It's almost better to be barefoot than wear flip-flops. My, my feet don't like shoes. <laughs> so I started walking around, and and my hips bother me a lot. And while I'm walking around, I know my hips don't hurt. <laughs> oh. And then I'm taking the weight loss, <laughs> the hair. <laughs> I'm taking it all. When you get a miracle, your first one, you, you, you quote the scripture, he who began a good work is faithful to, fin to complete it. So, Lord, you already started. Do everything else. Right, I'm picking it up. Even the lady the first day with the hair, I believe the hair is still growing. Even, even now as you're standing there, some of you need to start checking your waistline. Some of you, it was tight, and you're like, oh, wait a second. What is, it's loosening. If that's happening, join the line. Seriously. Yeah, just start checking. Check, just keep checking. While you're listening, I would just keep checking. Like, how many can walk and chew gum at the same time? So you can do that. Amen. Praise the Lord. Awesome. Thank you. Who's next? Are you checking? Some of you need to keep checking. What happened to you? So I got up when you called asthma, and I can breathe better than I could breathe when I came in. But then next you said the arm pain, and I haven't been able to raise my arm <laughs> for the past few days, which I've had shoulder pain for, I guess, seven years. But, like, I can do this. <laughs> wow. yes. Thank you. you pun thank you. Punch the devil out now. Yes. Amen. Oh, thank you, Lord. Come on up. Awesome. I, I love just hearing these. Amen. It's all Jesus. I didn't do anything. I just told you what he was doing. You can do this too, guys. Everything you're seeing tonight, you can do all this. This is fun. What happened? Um, I've had pain in my feet, on my heels for the past five, six days. And when you talked about feet, I just felt like a, a heat on my feet. And I started walking and it's gone. Wow. Praise the Lord. Are you from West Africa? I'm from Rwanda, East Africa. Rwanda. Whoa, that's cool. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Glad you're here. See people flying in all the way from Rwanda to be in this meeting tonight. No, she lives here, I think. What happened? Whenever you said vocal cords, my throat felt like there was almost like a stick right here. And then you said, fill yourself and breathe. And I breathed and I was like, and that feeling of a stick that felt my, on my throat is completely gone. I thank God. How many years you've had that? It was today. Days, just today. 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 No more sticks in there. No more. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. That's great when a stick comes out of your throat. You got another one? Don't be shy. Is she shy? I'll come to her. She's a little shy. Her name is Alexa Christine Peace. That's cool to have a last name called Peace. Wow. And what happened? Yeah, yeah. You, you can explain it to her. She's a little shy. I'm her grandmother. <laughs> she came here for a miracle for severe allergies, food allergies, dog allergies, pet dander, grass, whatever you name it. She's got it and been tormented since she was six months old. And she's been leaving God for her healing and her hands and her skin to be restored and set free and healed. And her brother Joshua's behind the curtain because he's embarrassed to come up. But he is believing God, and he said for his teeth to be healed so he doesn't have to have braces. But 
she reached up and wanted to come, and they've been running. I believe just the fact that you came up here was an act of faith. God's doing something in you. Amen. Amen. God's already healing you. You, you, start, you just keep checking it. Amen. You keep checking. Some people, they'll come to the meeting, and then in the morning they wake up, and, and they come back the next, like tomorrow morning I'll preach. Some are going to come and say, oh, my God, I woke up, and I didn't realize. So you're, I believe you're being healed right now. Amen. And Joshua being healed too. She's cute. And Joshua, and the doctor, and the dog, and everybody. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Thank you, Lord. I believe it's already happening. So maybe you have someone can ask the people if they were healed. Because, of course, if we all come, what we're believing for, we'll be here all night. But those who actually got healed just tonight, we're going to just do those first. Come on up. Amen. What happened to you? Um, you said that if you're believing God to touch a part of your body, put your hands on your body. I began to put my hand on my lower abdomen. I was having um, severe pain, and I had to sit down. And the only time it would lift is as I was in worship. And so I was like, Lord, this is a lot. I need something to go down right now. And when as soon as I laid my hand on my abdomen, I began to feel heat. And then I just got up, and then I ran to the back. And then more and more, it just lifted off to me. And it's gone. Thank you, Lord. Awesome. Come. This is fun. Come, come, come. What happened to you? How many more we got, just so we know? Okay. So uh, very similar. She's my spiritual mom, but very similar. Um, I have been having like a pain in my, I don't even know, maybe my groin area um, for maybe about like a little over a month now. And I had shared it with Coach uh, earlier this morning. And when you said stand up, you know, I think you said something. I don't, I don't even know if a bladder in fact, I don't know. But I stood up um, and I prayed, you know, and I ran. And I don't feel it anymore. And I was telling my husband. You don't feel the pain down there. I don't feel the, I don't feel the pain anymore. And it's Lord. consistent for about a month. Wow, hallelujah. Yeah, amen. Amen. What, what, what sport do you play? Oh, I don't, I don't play. You said your coach. No, coach. Um, oh, like, uh, like, L, L, like motivational coach or spiritual the, coach. The coach who was here um, earlier, who was uh, with. Um, okay, that coach. Cool. Awesome. I don't know what she said. That's why I just said that, Coach. That's how you get out of it. You go, oh, yeah, that one. What happened to you, brother? Yeah, I heard you mention new, new, uh, new, new cap, new cap. And then new what? My knees. Oh, your knees. Yeah, because I had a problem. Uh, my knees a couple of years ago. I could not be able to run it like I used to. So I decided to take a step and do squats. Wow. Then uh, I started. You squats tonight? Yeah. How much weight did you squat? No, I'm kidding. Just <laughs> Then I just feel you know, without no pain, and then I just no pain. And I come here to glorify the Lord. Where are you from? I'm from Tanzania. I'm leaving. Oh, Tanzania. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Wow. Thank you, Lord. I love it. Woo. Hey, it's not only for Africans. If you're white or Asian, you can still be healed. Amen. It's for everybody. I promise. But the, they have, you know, these guys, the thing in Africa, they got aggressive faith. There's a thing we can learn from them. They're aggressive. Amen. Like, like praise. Africans and African Americans are great at praise. White people are great at worship. Bethel, Soaking, Toronto Blessing, we're at the throne. So the best would be you get like an all-black praise team, then switch it to all-white worship team, then you get the full, no, kidding. But you know what I'm saying? Each, each nation has a gift. What happened? I had foot surgery about eight weeks ago and uh, with screws and bolts and still in pain. But I told the devil he was going to stop stealing from me. I, he'd been stealing from me for years, my health. I was attacked with cancer twice, breast cancer twice, and it felt like it was trying to come back on, and you have been speaking the word. And I am believing God, and I don't feel that pain. You don't feel that? I don't feel the pain. And that's from metal. Yeah, yes. So something happened with the metals yes. tonight. Yes, I don't feel the pain. You would always feel it, right? You know, I, I, how, how long you had that? Eight weeks ago. Eight weeks ago. Eight weeks ago you had the metal. Yes, I had surgery. And every time, every day you felt that? Oh, yes. The first time you cannot, no matter what, you can't feel it? Mm-mm. Mm-mm. So that means a creative miracle most likely happened with the metals. Uh, I don't have the metal detector like Katie Susie does sometimes. Like, you know, but I would get it checked and see what happened there. A lot of times they'll check it and the metal's gone or turned to bone or something. Isn't that cool? That's awesome. Thank you, sister. You're welcome. Come on up. I love that. This is so fun. What happened to you? Your, your hair got changed color in the glory. No, I'm kidding. No, what happened? No, when you called out about your teeth, because I was having a lot of pain with my front teeth, it's not there now. The teeth are, the teeth are there, but the pain's gone. Yeah, the pain is Praise the Lord. Amen. I'm glad your teeth are still there. <laughs> That'd be terrible. You come up. I lost, my teeth all disappeared in the glory. Can't eat meat now. What happened? Uh, real quick, I have real bad sinuses, like year round. So when you talked about sinuses and allergies, I felt my nose kind of open up. And I was able to breathe wow. deeply through both nostrils. Like, Thank you, Lord. Awesome, man. Thank you, brother. That's awesome. Hey, brother, where are you from? Guyana. Guyana. 
Oh, you're, I know Guyana. Which, which one? French Guyana, British Guyana, or? or? Used to be British. Used to be British. So what's it called? Guyana. Oh, okay. Because <laughs> I was in French Guyana. Okay. The, there. Then there's Dutch Guyana, I think, and then there's just Guyana Guyana. Right. So you're from the real Guyana. Real Guyana. Don't drink the Kool-Aid. There's three Guyanas there. Yeah, oh, my God. Don't drink the Kool-Aid. You know the story about the, the cult guy that made everybody drink Kool-Aid? So the expression, don't drink the Kool-Aid, comes from Guyana. But there's also, also good things that come from that country, too. I just don't know what they are, but I know there is. Amen. What happened? A lot of gold in Guyana. Okay, that's really good. All right. So you, you'll be good if a crash happens. Okay. What, what happened? Uh, 2016, Christmas morning, woke up, not feeling good. Uh, had, happened to be a massive heart attack. You had a heart attack? Put two stents in, and I'm believing that they're gone. And do you feel different? No. How do you know? You just by faith? There's no, there's no. Well, just by faith you're healed. So get it checked. That's what I would do. I'm going to have to get it checked. Amen. We rejoice in advance. Amen. Amen. What happened? Um, well, first of all, I want to give God the glory and I want to give God the praise because I deal with a lot of different pain. And when you start calling the feet, I started running as fast as I was able to. And even as the minutes keep passing by, I feel like my pain is actually coming down big time. Wow. And one of the big things is I can't raise the arm. You can't do what you just did now? I have a lot. She can't do that, but she can. And, I mean, I can't even, the pain that I was having on my lower back with the disc that I have issues on my spine, I don't even feel. All gone. Correct. Wow. Awesome. Thank you. Where are you from? Dominican Republic. Oh, Dominican. We know. We used to go to uh, Puerto Plata every, every year. We like that place. It's cool there. Yes, sir. Amen. Praise the Lord. Fuego. Gracias, Señor. Mas, Señor. Espíritu Santo. Hallelujah. Uh, that's when I go to Spanish countries. I practice that. Okay. That's all I know. <laughs> what happened to you? I'm getting new teeth. <laughs> you, you, something, you, you saw something? What is it? You can see something in there? My teeth. Yes, I can feel them. Five. I have fought cancer five different times. My daughter and I were almost killed in an elevator accident. My hips are healed. God is healing me from the crown of my head to the sole of my feet. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Lift your hands a minute. Lord, we thank you for healing her. And, and we also we break every assignment of, of death over her. Every assignment of, of death and destruction that's trying to follow her like a pattern. We declare the pattern stops tonight. The blood of Jesus stops the pattern. We close that portal of death. We break it off right now. Breaks! And we open up life, favor, prosperity, glory, restoration of all the devil stole. All the physical, financial, emotional, family issues. All that stuff. Now we declare a cycle of reaping. And then some from the, what the enemy stole, Lord. Seven times more what the enemy stole to come back now in this season, Father. Now, starting right now tonight. Right now tonight, we release angels of favor, breakthrough. There's some that are ones that release the gifts from heaven. Restoration, compensation. Compensation be released right now. I see this in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. <sighs> Man. And sometimes the verdict, in the glory, the verdict speeds up. You know, you're waiting to get the verdict from the courts of heaven, and you get into this glory realm, and it speeds up. Everything accelerates, even the, 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 the promises. It's all over you. Man, more, 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 more. Thank you, Lord. <sighs> We're going to do it real, real quick. Who, who, had a, who had a car accident? You've not been healed yet from it. You still, you know, have a problem from the car accident. All right, this will take two minutes, and we're going to do the, the offering, and we're going to pray for a uh, quick impartation. Who, you, uh, just come up here quickly. If you had car accidents, never got healed of it. This will be fun. It'll, it'll be really fast. Okay, so just stand up. Yeah, you don't have to get closer or further. It's just the glory is all over the place. It's just the fact that you got up. Some people think if they get right on the stage, it's not, it's not here. It's coming from up there. But, all right, ready? Yeah, you just get here like in the middle here. You don't need to, I, I would stand up. You don't, need, you don't need to kneel just yet. You can kneel after you got healed and thank the Lord for it. But right now you can stand up, yeah. <laughs> people don't know. They kneel, stand, yeah. retrieve, release. You know, fire. I used to push all the buttons. Fire, release, retrieve. If you tell that to a dog, you'd be doing all kind of things, back and forth. Sit down, stand up, run around. I loose, I bind, I release, I retrieve. Whew, man, glory is so strong here. Close your eyes. So, Lord, we thank you that you're here. There's no time in your glory. We go back in time to the time of the accident. In the name of Jesus. And the trauma that came at the moment of impact that tried to protect the body from the pain, we command now the trauma... 
go. Go, 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 go from the, from the cell membranes, from the memory, from the body, from the emotions. All the trauma leave. That's why you couldn't get healed because someone's they're praying over you, over your body, but the trauma's, the trauma's inside protecting it. And then your hands, your body's your hands here laying hands on you. It's only touching this, but it doesn't touch the root. So we take the root out and we hit the trauma. But the blood of Jesus go back in time. Moment of impact, trauma come out. There he goes, go. Now body be healed without the trauma trying to protect it. Body recreate, reconstruct, time reversal. Even before you were in your mother's womb, he knew you, he called you, he, he, you were perfectly made. Bones, ligament, tissue, recreative miracles, that, that, that whatever they couldn't do before, motion be restored in the name of Jesus. Full range of motion, body parts, nerves, tissue, bones, whatever needs to go back into place, pop back into place. And we command the body to be healed from the car accident, the injuries, the memory of it that the body is re reacting to in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, now just check your body. Do something you couldn't do. Some of you are going to feel immediately. Some of you might be, you know, it, it's a few minutes, but it's something that started right now. I'm just going fast because time is running out because we laughed too long at the beginning. <laughs> so made the time go, whoo. Man, God is good. Are you checking? There's someone here named Carolyn or Caroline. Caroline, Carolyn, maybe live stream or maybe here. I'll check here first. Carolyn or Caroline. A lot of times I get words like this and it's someone on live stream. And then and we get an email and the next day they show up. I got a word about a Russian lady once in San Diego. She wasn't even there. She wasn't even saved. She wasn't even in the church. But it was the neighbor of someone in the, in the church. And then she gets home and, then, and the Russian lady comes over. She gets healed. She gets saved. She comes the next night to testify with her family. So you never know. But I'm going to pray for Caroline. If you're watching right now, I like a healing over your body, over depression and suicide and trauma. I command that thing to break off of you right now and salvation and joy and glory to come over your house in Jesus' name. You just got to obey. Amen. You guys feeling different? Feeling good? You feel something? What, what, what do you guys feel? Your shoulder just moved forward from five bulging discs, discs from a year ago. Bulging discs from a compression from a car accident. You feel better now. Is that what you're saying? Praise God. Wow, that's huge. What, how about you? So you had a concussion, so you couldn't look at the light before. Now you can? Wow, that's huge. What, how about you? Two car accidents. Shoulder hitman. How do you feel now? A lot better, but still a little bit. Still, yeah. Sometimes you get eighty percent, seventy, but it's boom, boom, boom. Lord, we just got hundred percent, seventy, eighty, ninety, hundred. Zoop, speed it up, Lord. Who who else got it? You, who else got? You got one? Feel better? All right. Praise God. I'm just going fast because I mean we could have them come up and do the whole thing. Oh, you got healed? No. Oh. Oh, yeah. We're not doing salvation yet. No, I'm kidding. He, he's very saved. He's, he's, more saved than all, he's more saved than me. Amen? Amen. But uh, Okay. So everyone on the live stream watching, you guys stretch your hand towards those on live stream. All the miracles that happened tonight, there's no distance in the glory at all. Everyone watching, you can be healed the whole time equally as if you're here. Although next time there's a conference, if you live nearby, come here, please, because it's, it's more fun, obviously, with other people. But lift your hands. And Lord, I pray the same level of glory, miracles, healing, signs to come over the people watching. Father, heart conditions to be healed, tumors and cancers to die in Jesus' name. All the same miracles we've seen here, the knees, the backs, the head, the car accidents. Father God, the, even I see paralysis. You, you don't have, you, you can't feel your one of your limbs your hands or arm, and I command the strength and numbness to go in Jesus' name. Diabetes is being healed. Loss of feeling in your, in your toes and hands. In the name of Jesus, I command that to be restored right now. In the name of Jesus. And if whatever's wrong with you, just lay hands on your body in the glory right now. And just say, I declare I am healed in Jesus' name. I want you to speak to your own body, but while we're in this corporate glory right now. Because I, I don't know every, I can get some words of knowledge, but you know what's wrong with you. So it's not like, oh, only if David guesses it in the glory, I'll believe. No, you know what's wrong with you. So just take what you need. Jesus said they healed them all. I just do some of these to get it going, and then you just grab it, the rest. You don't need a word of knowledge to be healed. But it gives you faith that he's moving and healing right now. So what, just say it right now. Lord, in Jesus' name, I declare 
blah, 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 whatever is happening in you right now. Weight loss, tumors, cancers, cysts, doctor, a doctor report that told you, you know, you have this or this disease. Skin disease is being healed right now. Even your IQ is going up in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. So a lot of people here are like, wait, I need that. Okay, let everyone's IQ go up in Jesus' name. Suddenly you know things you didn't know. You, you can remember where the car keys are now. Thank you, Lord. You can find stuff without having to put it on find my iPhone. Suddenly God shows you. where It happened to me yesterday. I lost my wallet or something last night. We were packing. I'm like, I can't find it. I looked everywhere. Then I prayed, which I should have done first. And then he goes, it's in the closet. I'm like, I walk over there. Boom, there it is, right? In the, I mean, this, see, you know, Stephanie was laughing. She's like, she always tells me, we should do that first. I know, I forgot. Even I forget sometimes. I'm just, you know, I'm still human, right? We're all human. So thank you, Lord, for healing him. Is anyone here not saved? Or let me be afraid. How many are going to hell and you know it? Raise your hand. Some people are. I've, I've done that. And they're like, yeah, that's me. How many are not sure if you're saved? You're not sure. You're like, I don't know if I'm going to heaven or hell. Or if you're Catholic, you think you're going somewhere in the middle, like a holding place. There's no holding place. <laughs> How many are here are not sure of your salvation? You want to be sure. You're not sure. If you died right now and got hit by a Mack truck, where would you be besides splattered on the road? Where else besides that? Like, where would your spirit be? How many are not sure if you're saved? Just raise your hand. If you're not sure, just wave. And we're going to pray for you real quick, and you'll be saved. You'll, you'll know that you know. Okay. How many are not sure they're saved? You're not sure. I, I figured most people figured they were because we're in Tennessee. So everybody saved. But just, that's like Texas. But just in case. All right. We're going to do the offering here in just a moment. You know why the offering is awesome? Because in the glory, it's even more powerful. So in the glory, everything's more powerful. Your prayers, the miracles, giving in the glory. I experimented with this where I was seeing these kind of miracles. We've seen other miracles on the mission field, crazy stuff, even crazier than this, and we still see it. And one day I said, Lord, this is great that we're seeing weight loss, tattoos disappear, uh, missing teeth growing back. We're seeing all this stuff, weight loss. But I said, but Lord, um, what about our money? You know, we were missionaries. <laughs> we have these debts, and we can't even, how are we going to do stadiums? How are we going to do? And he said to me, David, you trust me in the miracles, and you take steps of faith in the glory, so I operate, but you don't trust me in the money. So I can't. You're not giving, I don't do miracles in your finances because you don't give me that. I said, I'll give you permission. Go right ahead. He goes, well, no, you, you don't give in such a way that I could do the miracle. You take a risk with the miracles. You call the things out or you, or you pull someone up. I go, what do you mean? He goes, well, because I had like $16,000 of debt. He goes, well, I'll just multiply what you put, but in my glory, I accelerate it. So in the old days, you'd give and maybe six months later, God bless you. In the glory, it's very fast. Everybody, everybody go like this. Put your finger out. Seed time, harvest time. Now, as the glory increases, there's less time or no time. And then the glory gets stronger. Seed time, harvest time. Go like that. Seed time, harvest time. And then, boom, same time. The reaper overtakes the sower. So the, the Word of Faith guys will teach, you know, like the Copeland thing and all that. And it's true on one level. As long as the earth remains, your seed time, harvest. They'll be like, don't expect a seed tomorrow to multiply when you give $1,000. They say that. But the Lord told me, yeah, that's, that's true as long as the earth remains. But when heaven comes down and you're giving to that, you're not operating on earth. That's why there could be an instant. Does that make sense? And so I go, okay. So I go, what do I do? He goes, well, what do you have? I said, Lord, I only have $1,000. And he goes, send that. At the time, Ruth Heflin was the, glo the glory person, the highest that we knew. She was like a mother to us. And I'm in the mission field. Send that to America, to Ruth Heflin. That seems completely backwards. I'm the missionary. I need the money, right? But the widow gave to Elijah. The boy gave to Jesus. Get it? We always like to give down, but when you give up into the glory realm, it's, it's, a, it's opposite of our natural way of thinking. So I said, okay. So I gave the 1000 Two days later, someone sent me $20,000. I never, and that was, this is way back, this is like 1999, I'd never seen that kind of money miracles. I was like, whoa, this is, so then the next day I whipped out another thousand, and nothing happened for like three months. I said, what happened the second time? He goes, the second time, that wasn't even the tithe. I gave you $20,000, and you gave a thousand. Oh, yeah, it's true. So like, the more God blesses you, the more you have to be a, does that make sense? So a sacrifice to someone that makes 5,000 a month, let's say you make 3,000 a month. You give, you know, 300 bucks, that's nice, but that's like a tithe. Okay, you give it as an offering, but it's not. But like you give 500 bucks or 1,000, now, now it's like, so you go past your limits in the glory realm. And then one day he, he said, give your car away. I said, why? Because I was reading Acts chapter 4. They laid homes and land at the feet of the apostles. Because he told me they, pray, they prayed, they fasted, they repent for denying Jesus, they, they worship. And then he says, there's one more thing you're missing. What's that? He goes, they gave sacrificially. I go, I'm already given. I'm a missionary. I live by faith, you know, I pay my tithes, a little bit of offerings. He goes, yeah, but you're asking me for Acts 4 level of glory, where your shadow heals the sick, multiplication. I, I go, well, I fast, I repent, I, I worship for hours. He goes, yeah, but sacrificial giving. Well, what do you mean? He goes, give your car. My car? I started buying the devil. I thought it was the devil. 
I, I went to the highest level of spiritual warfare you could ever do. Higher than anyone here. I have went to the highest level of warfare anyone here could ever do. Because I was trying to bind the creator of heaven and earth without realizing it. That's the highest level. I lost. And the, and the Lord goes, are you finished? It's not the devil. It's me. I said, Lord, I just wanted to cover all my bases just to make sure. So I repented. And then I said, why do you give the... He goes, because if I, if I could trust you with earthly riches, I could trust you with heavenly. He tests you with the earthly stuff if you can handle the heavenly. Just like with Becca, the prophecy I gave her where she gave up stuff she could have had, but then God's going to bless her anyway. You get it? So I said, okay, Lord, I'm going to give my car. Is it symbolic or is it real? No, you're really giving your car away. Oh, man, okay. I'm a missionary. I prayed three years to get this car. I live in a place where there's no subway, no train. But, Lord, this is a sacrifice. He goes, exactly, you're learning. Oh, okay. So I get to church hoping it's just a test, like, you know, Abraham Isaac. He's not going to, he's a good God. He wouldn't have me do that. No. So I bring my car keys, the title of the car, just, you know, symbolically. I'm preaching up a storm in the, our home church where we were attending at the time, and as dead as a doornail, the, the, the worship didn't break through. The, uh, the, even the announcements were terrible. And I get up, and it's, and it's like, Lord, where are you? You're not here. He goes, give the car. I'm not bringing my glory. What? It's like the mafia. Show me the money, then we'll talk, you know. And I was like, he said, because if I can trust you with the earthly, I can trust. How, how many, the heavenly is what we want, right? We want resurrections, angels, going into the throne room of heaven, the, the heavenly stuff, prophesying to governments and drug addicts. And, okay. so, so he trusts you with the earthly, like when he tells you to fast. Oh, I don't want to fast. I like food. We all like food. But you give up the food, to, or you give up your time spending hours. It's the same thing. Money is another way. So I said, okay, I gave the car away. The pastor starts crying, his wife. They were praying for a second car. Now I have no car. I'm so happy for you. <laughs> They're crying. I'm crying. No, I'm not crying. I almost cry. I'm so happy you have two cars now, and I got no car. Yay. Wow. And, and, then, and, the, and then when I gave the car away, the heavens opened up. Signs, wonders, miracles, salvation. Started. It just shifted. The, and I realized it opens. You know how fasting opens a portal? Praise and worship opens a portal. Repentance opens a portal. Sacrificial giving also opens a portal. It doesn't just give you more money. It literally opens a heavenly portal. People don't realize that. Solomon, because you gave that, boom, heaven opened up. The widow with Elijah gave her, gave her last th uh, meal, and all of a sudden the heavens opened up. Solomon gives a thousand animals. You're only supposed to give one. A thousand, boom, heavens open up. Cornelius, giving to God's people, the Jewish people, and praying because of your giving. He's, God says it through the angel. Cornelius, because of your giving with the prayers, I came down. He says it right there. So I thought, oh, okay, I give the car. Miracle signs, wonders, glory explodes. I'm like, wow. And what, the last guy's about to leave. I go, sir, sir, wait. Yes? Can you give us a ride home? We have no car. <laughs> so we get home. I go, okay, Lord, now what? He goes, now I can trust you. And then pff, crazy favor came. Stadiums, civic centers, God TV for free. Put us up every Sunday night. A guy who had two hours on God TV before they were in, in America when it was just in Europe. And then two cars were given to us. Two German cars, two German Mercedeses when I gave a cheap French car away. Then I didn't need to. I gave the second car away. Then they gave us a property. Humongous. So big. It was bigger than what we needed. So we had our staff living part of it. And Mahesh Shabda came once. He goes, your house is bigger than mine. How is this happening? You're a missionary. I said, yes, I don't know. And I didn't even have a salary. I don't know. I don't know why the bank let me even have it. You know, it's like it's supernatural. But I'm saying is the glory realm, it's, 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 there's also there's, there's the giving part that affects it. But in America, we've had so much teaching on giving in a fleshly way that when someone mentions it, you, you, people think, oh, that's that giving thing. I'm saying it in a supernatural way. Like Elijah type. Like we were in Israel preaching, and I taught this to the Israelis, and they were poor, Russians, Ethiopia, different countries. And, and they, money started multiplying in the place, in their pockets, in their purse. Like what is going on? Supernatural multiplication of finances. Our first crusade in Paris, France, I, I told them, okay, now count the money. And then they go, well, there's only a fourth of what we need. I said, oh, my God, what do I do, Lord? He goes, command it to multiply. We commanded it to multiply. I told the counters, count it four times, pray over it each time. Double, tripled, quadrupled. Supernaturally. But we never had to do that again because God didn't pray. How many want to live a supernatural life in every area? So if you put your, your body in it, he'll touch the body. People don't put their money in it, so they're blessed physically, but not financially. They put their marriage in it. They, work, they pray together with their wife. But when, whatever area you don't put in it completely, that area is not going to get the multiplication. And I, I didn't realize I wasn't doing it with the money. I wasn't taking the same faith steps as I was with other things. So it, how many want all, all eight cylinders working? Now, you're a businessman. You make 10000 a month, 20000 Your sacrifice is going to be a lot bigger than someone that works at Walmart or an unemployed person. 
unemployed person might give 500 bucks. Uh, someone, someone that has a business, they might give 10,000. It depends on where you're at. Does that make sense? For me, I was always giving $100 above my tithe. That was my big thing. And one day God goes, you got to break that and go to 1,000. I go, why? He goes, because whatever you put in that glory, that's what I use to multiply back to you. Oh, I got a revelation. I keep giving 20s, 30s, 50, 100. So that's all was coming. 20s, 30s, 50s, 100s. It was good, but not enough to pay the bills. You know, I had a credit card debt one time, $25,000. And I kept giving 50 above my tithe. That's great, but it's not enough to pay the t- So I put a dent in it by giving to God. And then it started just, does that make sense? Yeah, you want to buy a house, okay, property. It's a few hundred thousand dollars at least, right? You, giving $5 is not going to, it's going to take 20 years for that to happen. Let me get a revelation here. So I go all eight cylinders. When I'm under attack, how many ever get under attack from the enemy? Like Katie was sharing, I fast. Okay, we're fasting today, honey. And she'll, yeah, I fast. We'll worship all day. We'll think of anyone we might even possibly be offended by. We forgive everybody. We bless everybody. And, and, and we'll do everything. We'll repent of anything. And we'll give the biggest. We'll just give, give, give. And then all of a sudden, poof, everything breaks up. We don't know if it was the giving or the fasting or the repenting or the six hours of worship. We just do the nuclear. When you're under a heavy attack, we go nuclear. Does that make sense? Because each one is a weapon. And then poof, we get breakthrough in every area. So I'm just giving you secrets of the glory. Are you ready to give? Who's ready to give? Amen. And some of you, even God is so good, even if you give nothing, he'll multiply that zero times 30, zero times 60, zero times 100. You could have a new show called The Biggest Loser in Giving. It's still zero, right? Give him something to work with, guys. That's what I'm trying to say. Amen. He's, he, it's getting quiet in here. Becca just got it. She says, oh, yeah, wait, that's funny. <laughs> Are you ready? Who's ready? Who's excited about giving? You don't have to. You just don't get the blessing. Someone else. If you don't want the blessing, have, let your neighbor get it for you. So uh, who do they give to? Um, what's the name? Everything is there. They, they have a, it's Everything's on the there. envelopes. On it's the flyer. On the envelopes. It's on the bulletin. Yeah. So you can, can they text the gift? The, everything. No, not this one. Can I have the, the program, Linda? But it's already on the oh, it's, screen. It's on the screen? The, right there. Oh, it's okay. They're so it's on the screen right there, guys. But sometimes the older people, they don't know. FrancisMiles.com. You can give, text to give. I'll just say 469. We always say it in our conferences because some people, they don't get it. 469-410-7982. Text the word give and then put that number on there. If you're older or past a certain age, ask your grandkids. They'll help you with it. Um, so checks can be written out to, what's the name of the ministry? Francis Miles International. Francis Miles International. Million is the two L's. If you're writing, you don't know how to write million. Two L's. Right? They can even scan the code there. You can scan this code here to give. Amen. Give while the bank accounts are still open. <laughs> Amen. I'm giving like crazy right now. Amen. Because I need to reap like crazy and then prepare for what's coming. There's stuff coming. I'm going to show that tomorrow. But you want to be prepared so that actually you'll be, you'll be more blessed when the stuff starts happening. Amen. Like Joseph's storehouse. You have to know what's going on. How many want to know? Stuff's coming down the pike, but I'm excited about it. When Egypt got shaken, they got more blessed. And get the harvest of souls, the great harvest of souls is coming, it's, it's happening this year. Because the devil's trying to kill as many people as possible. God's trying to save as many. It's a race of who can kill and who can save as many as possible. So vaccines and then the, the, the viruses and then the uh, wars, rumors of war. All, all, they're trying everything possible. The next thing is war. They think war can kill a lot of people too. So the devil's going to, he's trying every possibility to kill people. Then murders, suicide rate, like everything possible he can do to get people to die, to go to hell before they get saved. That's basically the bottom line. So whatever your ministry is, even if you're not an evangelist, do something towards harvest of souls. There's a favor on that. Don't just be a teacher, a prophet, a pastor. If you're not, be part of someone that's doing it. Okay, all right, you ready? So if you're going to give by envelope, you can come up here and give right now. I'll let you walk up and give. Amen. And this is a good ministry. I trust this ministry. If I didn't trust this ministry, I wouldn't be preaching here. I wouldn't. I trust this ministry. Amen. I know he's a man of integrity, and so is his wife. They use it for the Lord, like the apostles were. The apostles used it for the gospel advancement. They also used it to feed the poor. They use it for different things. And I know this ministry does all that kind of stuff. They use it for the gospel, amen, to spread. And there's a glory here. Thank you, Lord. We're also apostolic in our region, and it's the same thing. We, we, we all do all kind of different things. And we have, a human, we have a humanitarian organization inside of Israel. We do that. We do crusades. We do just like Miles does. Praise the Lord. Amen. And don't, don't be sad when you get big excited. Don't do a funeral service for your $1,000 because it'll make babies and multiply and, and make more kids and grandkids. They didn't come back home.
Yeah, start bringing your bigger bills to church. Don't, don't be ashamed. Like some people are like, oh, I don't want to bring the big businessman to church or the, the famous person. And so a lot of times we bring our $1 bills, but the $1,000 and the $100, they want to come to church too. They want to experience the glory. So don't be embarrassed to bring them. Oh, they might not like it. They might think it's weird. No, no. Let, let, let them be part of it. Amen. Some of you have been holding that $1,000 in your back pocket with a, and you're like holding it like it's your baby, you know. <laughs> You guys accept homes and cars too, right? Homes. Okay, so you have a home. You want to give it. They'll, they'll use it for the Lord. If you have a car, they'll give it. Boats too? Yachts? Okay. Okay. Whatever. Whatever. You're gold, silver. Bitcoin, but when it goes back up. All right. <laughs> NFTs. It's getting quiet in here. Glory. Man. <laughs> I'm going to pray that same glory that's doing the miracles here does the, the finances. So, uh, you know, the, a lot of times people used to invite me for the miracles and stuff, and then they found out that when I pray for finances, I found this out the first few years after 99 when they got the new, they started inviting me just to do the offering. I went, wait a second. They go, we love the miracle signs wonders, but when you do the offering last time, it exploded. So they would invite me back not to preach, just to do the offering. I went, wait a second. So then I realized, no, I'm only doing the offering if I'm preaching. <laughs> but but there's a glory, because there's a glory connected to this. When we pray, we're going to pray. I'm also going to pray debt cancellation. A lot of you need to get out of debt very quickly. This year, before, before September, you need to get out of debt. I don't have time to explain it. But do, and how do you, if you don't make enough, you can't work three jobs, you can give your way out of debt. That's the fastest way I know. You know or you can burn yourself out and still not do it. You know. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for these offerings. We ask you for the glory to come on it. We ask you for angels of, of harvest angels of multiplication in the glory. There's angels of territory. We always talk about territorial spirits, like demonic spirits, but there's territorial angelic spirits, or angels over territories that you can call into a territory and take the land. So we call for angels of property and territory, even for this ministry here in Franklin, Lord, for, for Miles' ministry, uh, Francis, Dr. Francis Miles, we ask you for property. He didn't tell me anything, but I'm just praying I see property, a ministry base, a headquarter physical location that can do the conferences, that can do the training schools, that can do the media, that can do everything, Father. Another headquarter, we call forth the, the angelic territorial spirits over this region to release, to help release and take from the enemy something that was reserved for this ministry, Lord. And this city is a Goshen in, where there's many different re refuge cities as certain states and seas will have total destruction and chaos and people will still get saved in those. Others will be a place of refuge, prosperity, protection, and people will move from state to state. I've been saying this for years, even before the pandemic, but now it's happening even more in Tennessee. But certain part, I believe Franklin, even more than Nashville, Franklin, it, there's these little pockets of Goshens. And this is a Goshen place that if you can just get here, and I know he's based in Atlanta too, but this is even more of a Goshen than Atlanta. So certain times when things get hairy, you're, you're going to go, honey, we got to get to back up to Franklin because <laughs> this is a, a more of a refuge place. Atlanta is a harvest place. There's souls there. You got to go to the lost, but then you got to California. We go all the time, but we don't live there. We just go to do stuff and come back. You know what I'm saying? But I have friends that live in California. They're called there. So I declare favor. And some of you guys are going to give you faith to buy land, property, Ranches, far, I mean, you're going to give you favor and you're going to house the lost and people in these end times. There's going to be end time refuge, Goshen properties, communities. I'll share more of it about that tomorrow. We just bless this, Father. Every debt cancel and favor over this offering. Open the heavens with this offering. Combine this with the pray, the worship, the fasting, the holiness, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Give the Lord a big hand. Amen. I'm sorry I went a little late. And uh, I'm going to have Dr. Francis come back. How many love Dr. Francis and his awesome wife? Amen. And they are welcome here anytime. In fact, every conference he is invited to be the guest speaker every single time. I want you to welcome Dr. Francis. I want him to feel honored. And you are welcome to preach in Franklin, Tennessee anytime you want. Have you noticed? He'll have many speakers, but there's one that's always here, him. Because he's the favorite. Amen. All right. We love you, brother. the humblest man and the humblest minister in Franklin, Tennessee. You know how I know that? Because he told me. No, he didn't tell me, but he is.